So, Gith, aren't you worried your kind will punish you for consorting with us? My name is Lazelk Choki, and my kin will understand my need for servants. They will help you, but only if I ask. Lazel, have you ever done a good deed just for the sake of it? I have performed deeds well and efficiently. Is this what you mean? Mm, not exactly. But you answered my question. That orb seems powerful. What can it do once it's extracted? Nothing good can come of it unless it is contained. Why? It might be useful. Who knows? Do you think your kin search for you, Lazel? I know they do not. It is my responsibility to cleanse myself. They pursued the Nautiloid. Perhaps they were trying to free you. A vain notion. I am one of many and will not be a burden to my queen. I admire your courage, Gale. Thank you. Any particular reason? Between the orb and the bug, you've got more than your fair share of unwelcome passengers. What can I say? Mother always taught me to be a gracious host. So, Will with a Y. Why? Why, that's right. But why? Why, why? A great uncle's name, my father said. But I just figured he couldn't spell. Your prowess in battle is remarkable, as is your battle stance itself. Rathajak, a technique known to few outside Kalir. Shall I teach you? I'll pass, thank you. I prefer abjuration over acrobatics. As much love as I hold for Baldur's Gate, these frontiers delight me as much as any bustling street. <laughs> you can't be serious. This is a howling wasteland. I haven't even had a bath since the abduction. <sighs> I must reek of a lithid slime. <sighs> sure, but think of the stories you'll be able to tell. Transforming into a mind flayer might have its perks. At least then I could float over this ugh, muck. Not one for roughing it, I see. <laughs> Wallowing in filth is for pigs and children, my dear. Pigs, children, and people with a little bit of grit. Tell me, Gail, what is your interest in the astral plane? Time. Or rather, the absence of it. In the astral plane, everything is eternal. It will be my home soon enough, should Vlacketh will it. <sighs> Flowers, leaves, grass. Can't beat it. I was raised in the city. I'm more used to feeling cobblestones underfoot than grass and fallen leaves. Before I went to Avernus, I'd have agreed with you. Nothing quite like Baldur's Gate, is there? Nothing in my recollection, anyway. From sweet woodland to stinking swamp. Can you do tricks like that, Gail? Easiest thing in the world. Though I'd do it the other way around. You've a particular way with words, Gail. Perhaps oration suits you more than battle. They're not mutually exclusive. The weave is served best with a dash of eloquence. I've been watching you fight, Shadowheart. Your skills are improving. My skills were just fine to begin with. You can save the compliments. I don't pay compliments. I make observations. Still no symptoms. No sign of tentacles so far. The same. Except for a knot of worry in my stomach that's in no rush to go away. That I can relate to. Hey, what's on your mind, Astarian? You seemed a million miles away just then. Mm hmm Oh, I was just pondering that heart of yours. There were times I would have been thrilled if everyone who put their hands on me burst into flames. Hmm. I'd trade you if I could. The traitor Kithrak takes great interest in this relic of yours, Shadowheart. Or should I say, weapon. What are you hiding? Nothing. I assume your kin are just as misguided as you are. You find well, but you're so... Efficient. Why not have a little fun? Fun? I fight to win, not to make spectacles. <sighs> what a waste.
You seem to know a good deal about our condition, Gail. Everything, really. Not to put too fine a point on it. A humble specimen, aren't you? On occasion. I saw you training those children. You were so gentle. That's not how I was taught. Cruel words strengthen neither heads nor hearts, Shadowheart. I wouldn't quite say that. I learned a lesson, after all. And came to resent your tutor, I bet. I taught them to fight, not to hate. So, you know about these parasites. Will we survive them? Only if my people extract them. The only other cure is the blade. Okay. Wonderful. Hey! Something bit me! Just an insect. I'm sure you'll survive. Besides, it probably figured you for a tasty treat. Give me an aboleth over a midge any day. Poetry is torture. Your master's quite clever, Astarian. Don't you agree? You and I have very different definitions of clever. What did you mean before, Gail? A woman with shadows for eyes, you said. Merely? That if the eyes are the mirror to the soul, yours have dark curtains across the mirror. No offence taken, I hope. Not necessarily. I haven't made up my mind about you yet. Well, it's no boulder's gate, but at least it's some kind of civilization. I do miss the gate, though. The Elf Song Tavern, sunset over Grey Harbor, fried fish at the docks. Drunk young patriarchs, naked in the fountains. Ah, civilization. Feed if you must, Astarian. But give me so much as a hungry look, and I'll drive a stake through your heart. Mm. I do so very like spicy food. Tell me, Lazo, when you say we might be purified at your crash, what does that mean exactly? Augusta will affix the Zathisk, the purifier, to our heads. Its magic will quell the parasite in an instant. You know what I really miss about Baldur's Gate? The food. Freshest fish I've ever had. I don't care for fish. Red meat. Now, that's a different matter. Rare as can be. Dripping. Well, unless we find a cure, you won't have any teeth to chew it with soon enough. You strike me as cleverer than most, Istiki Gale. Multiple tutors, I should guess. Many a wise man and woman indeed. Waterdeep is the home of myriad scholars. Ah, the City of Splendors. Spent a whole fleet's wake there with my father. What a delight. I'm feeling a bit parched and peckish. Me too. Keep an eye out for any passing vagrants. I'm afraid you'll have to content yourself with vagrant chickens. Your sour face is tiring, Shadowheart. By all means leave if I am so distasteful. I'd rather not turn my back on you. If it's all the same. So, a vampire spawn and a monster hunter in the same group. We're not going to have trouble, are we? Excuse me. Since this tadpole, I'm barely a monster at all. I don't see a problem. As long as Mr. Fang there keeps his appetite in check. I just want to survive. Same as you. Astarian. How is the rat diet going? It may soon come to an end if you don't shut your mouth. Come, Astarian. I know you're not really as heartless as all that. <laughs> of course not. I'm a pussycat, really. Just ask anyone who's seen my claws. Lozelle, how would you punish someone who wronged you? Wrong me how? Oh, say, murder or theft? Killing is good. It culls the weak. But theft would be paid for painfully, a thousand times over. Hmm, good to know. The road to Baldur's Gate is a long one. Who knows how long it'll take these folks to get there on foot. If they make it. They're slow, vulnerable, 
Half or more will die long before Basilisk Gate. Doesn't seem to trouble you a jot. What good would it do for me to be troubled? We can't save them all. I'll be keeping an eye on you. Understand? If I choose to kill you, you will not even see it. So, Will, what was the Blade of Frontier's toughest kill? Ah, it was a great scrap. A hungry minotaur with a hankering for human flesh. An axe-bearing mountain of fur she was. Gave me a nasty scar. I hope you don't mind if I don't ask to see it. Was a time I tussled with hill giants without breaking a sweat. Now, a mere werebear could swat me halfway to arm. Strange things are happening to us. What festers in our minds may well impel our bodies. Ethel mentioned Neveree's magic. What in blazes does that mean? Magic from the fallen empire of Netheril. Ancient, exceedingly dangerous, and quite unrivaled. Wonderful. I'd hate to be destroyed by any common old magic. Every moment a new danger. I may have underestimated this Faerun. <laughs> you don't know the half of it. With a bit of luck, we'll meet a beholder. So, you and Lazel. Seems tense. Please don't remind me. But keep your guard up with her. Noted. Ever heard of a vampire called Casador? Well, I don't think so. Why? Friend of yours? He's patriarch of the Tsar family. Nasty fellow, if the histories are accurate. I imagine they are. I was wondering about your queen, Vlakith. What tales of her reach us are terrifying. But I suppose that's not how you would describe her. Vlakith is unity. Fear and beauty. Life and unlife. Eyes like onyx. Teeth like daggers. There is none more perfect. Sounds vile. I assume the meaning of perfect was lost in translation. Killed a few giant bats in my day, Astarian, but never hunted a vampire. Just to remind you, I'm merely a spawn. It won't count. But if you want a true vampire, I'm happy to recommend one. Nothing like a brisk stroll through the forest to invigorate the spirit. I was just thinking the same thing, but less poetically. And without so much as a stirring from our tadpoles. A girl could get used to this. That Zathisk you mentioned intrigues me. Care to tell me a bit more? An intricate device crafted by Millar, our most gifted artisans. I am sworn to say no more. A question for our master monster hunter. How would you approach killing a vampire? To start, lure it into the sun, drive a stake through its heart. Why? Just curious. A full-on vamp, you mean? Lure it into the sun, drive a stake through its heart. And that's not the end of it. The suckers are wily. No offense. None taken. Wiliness keeps me alive. More or less. Goblins are such vile little parasites. Not the vilest any of us have seen of late, unfortunately. Given your own nature, are you really the one to judge? Tell me, Lazel, what is it like on the astral plane? I mean, your home realm intrigues me. Githyanki lay their eggs on other planes. They cannot mature in the astral. I will only be welcomed once I obtain a Mind Flayer's head. I used to be agog at everything when I first walked in the sun. Perhaps I'm adjusting to this new life. It's when you use words like agog that I remember you're actually two centuries old. And it's when you think agog is an impressive word that I remember you're just a child. These flowers are quite vivid, not to mention pungent. Not to my liking. Are there no flowers in Tunarath? In the City of Death, the Malar cultivate the fruiting bodies that sprout from the corpses of the slain. Huh. I'd rather get them from my florist in Waterdeep. It's all the same to you. 
Mm, what a dismal forest. Monsters could be lurking behind any and every tree. Hmm, it would be wise to fear the trees themselves. It feels like the forest itself longs for our destruction. Frustrating, that. Monsters I can fight, but I can no more sever these shadows than I could the wind or the sun. So, Githyanki undergarments. Very fashionable. The underharnesses are often used for strapping oneself onto a red dragon. Ooh, fashion and function. You lot really have it all figured out. Do we have to spend so long poking about down here? I'd much rather be outside with the sun on my skin. You've only just come to tolerate sun and you're already nostalgic. If you're going to complain the whole way, by all means, return topside. You could use the colour. Spent much time in the Underdark? Some. And you? Seems a perfect hunting ground for... You know. Perfect? You tried drinking an Earth Elemental's blood. The blade slayed a death dog or six, uh, crossed a few dwergar. I never was scared of the shadows. Couldn't find you for a while at the party. Was hoping we could regale our friends with a nice three-horn duet. Ah, I just needed a moment of quiet to think, that's all. What about? <laughs> Wouldn't you like to know? Well, yeah. One thing I'll say for the Hells, the gossip is excellent. Faerun's a funeral parlour by comparison. They say wealth offers a form of magic. Alas, it's one I've rarely dabbled in. Nor I. Never had more than a few coppers in the city, and any soul coins in Avernus went straight to Zariel. Mm, make no mistake. Souls are sold for coins up here as well. All too cheaply in most cases. Gods! We're not back, are we? On the Nautiloid, no. This is a different nursery. Similar, but not identical. There's likely one in every colony. <laughs> I don't care what's in every Mind Flayer colony, Gale. Nobody does. Except you. Did Zariel know you'd be unable to touch anyone when she crammed that awful thing into your chest? Thing is, I can touch devils and the like, back in Avernus. I never did, because I'm not a masochist. But I could have. Gods, I'm glad you got out of there. With my new best friend on my tail the whole time. Who knew? And seeing you've got someone to care about now, after ten bloody years, what would you say? Good for you, mate. My, my. Well, I'll say this for the Bone Cloaks. They know their mushrooms. Perhaps they should expand their horizons. Too much time obsessing over fungi seems to leave them a bit, well, like them. Oh, a byproduct of their profession. Few can spend a lifetime inhaling fungal spores without turning out a bit muddled between the ears. I'm used to a crypt's gloom. This is something else. Such depth to the shadows. I don't care what others say about the Underdark. It's beautiful down here. I spent long enough in the dark. It gets old. Just when I was getting used to the sky again. Fear not, Karlak. Sun, moon and stars will still be there, waiting for us. Meanwhile, this place is pretty spectacular, isn't it? No book or painting could ever do its strange beauty justice. But perhaps our stories might, when we return to the surface. Beautiful. <laughs> Lethal. The Underdark is everything I thought it'd be. And I... This environ seems worthy of a Githyanki warrior's estimation. Ah... <sighs> To be deemed worthy by the great Lazelle of Kresh Kalir. Continue as you have, Karlak, and you will achieve the same. The whole village is falling to pieces. These goblins aren't exactly house proud as occupiers go. Wouldn't blame the gobs. Place looks like it's been abandoned a good while. But hey, maybe we can scare up a few dusty bottles of wine somewheres. I like your way of thinking. Split any takings we find? Smell that? Blood. This whole plane reeks of it. That'll wake you up of a fine day, won't it? 
I do not need awakening. My senses are sharp as steel. I believe we're approaching the crash. Once we're inside, let me do the talking. Just to be clear, you're going to lead us into a nest of Githyanki marauders, and we're supposed to trust that will end well for us. Is that a problem? More a sign of the times, I suppose. The architects who built this must have been remarkable. Pity their vision didn't stand the test of time. All's not lost. I mean, just look at this place. You've quite the knack for finding the bright side of things, haven't you? Hope keeps you going. I didn't exactly dress for hiking mountains. Shame we couldn't procure some pack mules or horses. Horses? Perish the thought. Those ill-tempered beasts are prone to biting. Well, so are you, but we keep you around, don't we? <laughs> and I'm not offering any rides, if that's what you're thinking. Who's in charge of the mind flayers, Lazelle? Is there a squid king or something? No. Each geich is servant to an elder brain. No king unites elders. Only their collective tyranny. A mind flayer monarch? Imagine that. Such a thing could shatter worlds. Gods, how are we not there yet? My feet are killing me. Want me to carry you? Oh, darling, would you? Sure, if you promise to swap once I get tired. Oh, please, I can barely manage my pack. You'd kill me. I don't suppose you've any clue where we are in relation to Waterdeep. From this distance between Elturel and Baldur's Gate, I'd say a long way away. Ah, that will make getting word to my mother rather tricky. No matter. What she doesn't know can't hurt her. Not at this distance, anyway. <sighs> These cragged hills make for weary souls. I see why most headed inland prefer the smooth sailing of the Chionfa. More importantly, the land west of here suffers under a terrible curse. You've seen it for yourself? I've glimpsed that doom during my travels but never dared get close. If we continue this way, we may get too close for comfort. Joy, gotta respect these gif. They don't fool around. Oh, I'm more than aware, trust me. I've had plenty of training in what to expect from them. I'll certainly be treading very carefully, trust me. In that case, lead on, miss. Can a squiddy go solo, Lazel? You know, Break free of their master. Renegades are rare, but not unheard of. Omelium is one such creature. A geich gone astray is no less dangerous for it, and its head no less valuable. A remote spot for a monastery. I suppose they wanted to make sure the monks avoided temptation. Yeah, but look at these mountains. The height of temptation. No, I mean more like vices. You know, pleasures of the flesh. Met a Lamara demon who married a mountain, though. It's a thing. I think the thin air might be getting to you, Karlak. Lazel, did you ever fight illithid creatures in your training days? Never. The geich aboard the Nautiloid was the first I ever witnessed in flesh. Really? I figured you would have joined your fellow gif in a colony raid. A young warrior is expected to fight their first geich with their cousins, kin hatched from the same clutch. The ones who triumph earn a place in Githyanki society. The ones who don't perish. The mysteries of the monastery. The secret of the crags. What was that? I really can't abide mumbling, Will. I'm trying to decide on a title for this chapter of The Blade's Adventures. Haven't you ever heard, don't catch your chickens before they hatch? Or perhaps, don't count your adventurers before they survive an arduous, danger-filled journey? We've had some close calls already. There could be even tougher days ahead. Cheer up. It might be all downhill from here. Meaning things will start becoming easier for us? Or our situation will deteriorate from here? Exactly. What if this crash doesn't work out, Lazel? What if your kin fail you? 
If I can reach the crash, my kin will provide. Any failure will be mine alone. If you say so. Just don't expect me to put all my eggs in the same basket. That expression must sound curious for Gith Yankee ear, given the way they're birthed. <laughs> What's so funny? You haven't got some laughing curse, have you? <sighs> I really made it out of Avernus. It's incredible. All right, just keep it down. We're conspicuous enough without your hyena call. What a sight. We should stop for a nice little lunch. Take it all in. Is the worm gnawing at your grey matter? We must find a crash and be purified. True. Fine. First, purify the tadpole. Then, a little lunch. Lazel, are you sure of the greeting we'll find at this crash of yours? Of course I'll be welcomed. And if you behave, you may keep your head too. I can count on you to vouch for me, I hope. Don't worry. You're more useful to me alive. Oh, man, adventuring is thirsty work. There used to be a monastery in this region known for producing a wonderful ale. <sighs> that sounds like heaven. Wait, used to? Oh, yes. Long ruined, I'm afraid. No chance of a frothing pitcher awaiting us there, but still. At least your thirst for knowledge is quenched. Ah! Uh. I knew I should have attended the Blackstaff's lectures on Githyanki Tiersu. If I understood their script, who knows what secrets their texts would surrender. Why not ask one of the friendly, bloodthirsty warriors? I'm sure they'd be happy to translate. Is this your first time on the Sword Coast, Lazel? Yes. It is much more lively than the Githyanki slates led me to believe. Just wait till you see Baldur's Gate. You'll never want to leave. We are permitted to walk so freely. Such a lack of discipline would be punished severely in Kalir. Walk freely? This place is as tight as a patriarch's purse. We should have been disarmed on entry. I'm pleased we weren't, but it's strange. No doubt they found me too intimidating. How I have longed for these familiar sounds and sights. Well, I'll be. So even the ferocious Lazel has a soft side. A possessive side. What is a warrior without something precious to protect? Ugh, another ruined temple full of foul-smelling beasts, spoiling for a fight. No mere temple. This was a monastery devoted as much to study as to worship. Oh, how ignorant of me. So it'll be free of foul-smelling beasts, then? Quite the opposite. Some monastic orders celebrated their pungency as proof of their devotion. To think is to stink, was the motto of one ill-fated brotherhood near arm. Oh, <laughs> but you meant beasts of the life-threatening variety. Yes, I'm sure it's teeming with those. Lizelle, do you want to talk about what happened at the crash? Trust me, you'll know when I'm ready to discuss it. Fair enough. But if you change your mind... It is not a matter of mind. It is a matter of faith. And I have been put to the test. Uh, biting flies. Midges. Ugh. Shouldn't nature be beautiful and serene? It looks so nice in the upper city parks. Upper city, huh? Swish. Never spent much time there myself. I'll happily take you, if we survive this bug's banquet. Hmm. <laughs> Sounds good. I've always been curious what a Patriarch Lou looks like. Uh, probably best if I keep a low profile. They used to know me all too well in the Elf Song. Wonder if our paths ever crossed in the before times. Were you always so sneaky? <laughs> I haven't survived for two centuries by being reckless, and I hope to survive at least two more. Yeah, yeah, don't rub it in. Careful, Lazel. It's dark around here. Would be a terrible shame to lose you forever. Yes, do keep your wits, Shadow Heart. Should a dagger suddenly slice your neck, we may never know who's to blame. I can't quite believe you've been a pickup artist all these years, Astarian. I sound like a charming rake, you mean. 
the hero everyone fawns over. Most of the things you say still sound like you're in a two-copper paperback read by little girls. Well, if the doublet fits. Your years in the hells have made you a fierce warrior, Karlak. Fierce in battle? Maybe a bit naive in... everything else. In that way, you are like many a young Githyanki. Wise to the ways of battle, if not to the wider world. Makes sense. And how are you getting on out here in the world? Mindfully and meticulously. Indulge me, Lazel. As someone unfettered by Faerunian beauty standards, how would you appraise my appearance? Your beard looks like the hairy tufts upon the Sirlon, the largest of worm kind that slither our skies. Hmm. I suppose that's... a bad thing? No, don't answer that. So, Astarian, which of us would you rather feed on if he had free reign? Ah, uh, Will, no question. He's strong, fast, and righteous. I'm salivating already. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. You sound disappointed. I'll bite you if you ask. I'm sure you would. Don't sound so eager. So, do you have loves waiting for you once this is all over? You mean just waiting? Like a lovesick puppy? Short-term amusements are much less hassle. You know what? That is not the easiest of questions for me to answer. I'm surprised you're permitted to choose a partner outside of your own people. I can't imagine Mother Gith would approve. Doesn't she prefer us lesser species enslaved? Or eviscerated? We are to use and misuse each civilization in the stars in every way we know. I do not conquer by blade alone, Gale. You seemed quite forward with your compliments earlier. We'd only just met. Seize the day, I say. More now than ever. Careful you don't pull a muscle in your haste. Do vampires actually drink blood out of goblets like in the storybooks? Doesn't seem very fresh. Straight from the neck is preferred, but goblets are used in mortal company. They save on awkwardness. We could share a drink some night, if you're curious. A nice red wine in your goblet, of course. <laughs> Very kind of you, but I'm saving my best bottle for someone already. So, Shadowheart, such a name implies yours is a difficult heart to find. It's not that hard to find. Perhaps any difficulty is more telling of you, Gail. Karlak, a hypothetical question for you. If someone, not me, of course, detected a hint of romantic interest in them from another unnamed individual, um, what might that someone do about it? Whoever it is, just talk to them, Gail. And leave out the hypotheticals. Talking, right. I'm good at that. Ugh, I hate swamps. The place reeks. Probably full of bloodsuckers as well. Probably. I can't blame them. You're delicious. If that was an attempt at flirting, I should let you know I prefer the strong, silent type. Shadowheart, you wound me. I never was a sucker for a smooth talker, but I admit, Astarian, you're pretty slick. And you're rather the opposite of slick. Do you have a point? I was just being nice. Step one of starting a conversation, think before you speak. Never was my strong suit. Shadowheart. Such a grim name for such a beautiful flower. Could you not stare so blatantly in my neck when you say that, please? I heard you mumbling that line to yourself earlier. It needs more work. Fortunate for his tongue, he didn't say it to me. Oh, but do keep calling her flower. She'll love that. You know, Karlak, there are other ways to express love beyond run-of-the-mill physicality. 
Are you going to try and teach me about exceptional uses for a mage hand or what? Well, actually, I was thinking of poetry. Oops, sorry. But uh, now that I think of it, is mage hand especially hard to learn? I am enjoying our walks together. Aren't you, Gail? Um, sure. In silence. I hardly saw you at the party. Did the honest and true blade sneak off for a little fun? No, nothing like that at all. <laughs> oh, but you protest too much. Now I know you are practicing your sword play. Would you believe I've never been with a Githyanki? If you cease your frivolous ways, keep your mouth closed, and learn to obey, perhaps we can attempt it. Oh, no. I think I will leave that honour to our esteemed friend. So, Gail, how is your sad, hopeless pining going? I'm hardly pining. But a year or more since Mistra cast me aside. Oh, my dear wizard, I wasn't talking about Mistra. Why have you not tried to lay with me, Astarian? I guess it shall have to remain a mystery, now and forevermore. It is in your nature to have tried. You have not. No, and you're so charming and alluring. It's baffling, really. Well, you are a man of great vigor. Why have you not sought to mate any of these knights we have camped? Ah, uh, well, I admit I've had thoughts about it. In my own way. Do not think well. Act. Sorry if this is rude, but can vampires fall in love? <laughs> what a preposterous question. Vampires can do anything you can do and a damn sight better. Sunbathe? Swim? <sighs> All right. There are a few limited exceptions. Good to know love is on the table, though. It is. Though if the table is laden with good wine and meat, love is often left to rot with the salad leaves. I see you waste no time pursuing your quarry, Astarian. Tell me, do you always woo your lovers with such patient attention? <laughs> I rather thought I was a little slow this time. Usually they're begging me to drain them on the first night. I wouldn't have predicted the night you shared with our friend, Lazel. You didn't consider it beneath you. They were beneath me at times, but also above me, and standing at certain points. <laughs> That's enough. I get the picture. God, do I get the picture. Have you noticed any attachments of the more... Uh, romantic variety flourishing in our camp, Will? I think I'm not the right person to be asking. I can recognize a troll silhouette on a far horizon, but I wouldn't know a flirtation if you whacked me alongside the head with it. Someone of your social stature, Will, are they typically allowed to pursue their heart's whims as they like? I don't have to ask for permission, if that's what you mean. Really? I'm surprised. I thought... Dowries, alliances, and old blue blood feuds might have to be balanced against your desires. I'm my own man, Shadowheart, in this sense at least. Lazel, you've the most exquisite eyes, golden as the sands of the Kalim. And you've a soft skull. A gay tentacle will have no issues pushing through it. Is that a compliment? No, it is a fact. Life in this Faerun is laughably weak. Do you have someone waiting for you in Baldur's Gate, Astarian? A sweetheart, perhaps? No sweethearts, no. I prefer them savoury. This is what I get for trying to strike up conversation. Not one in particular. The city is a veritable feast of sweethearts. You must be eager to get back, then. Slimmer pickings out in this wilderness. I've never met anyone like you, Lazel. Yes, I've been told I'm quite scintillating. Have you really? 
No. Mm. Lazel, do you believe in love at first sight? I hardly believe in love at all. Oh. But I do believe in carnal pleasure. Oh. This place is hard to bear. I hope we're able to continue on our way before too long. I know what you mean. Everyone is so... unhappy. Oh. Well, I meant more than molten rock and plunging chasms, but yes, the folk leave something to be desired as well. Present company excluded, of course. Oh, hush you. Stop fishing for compliments. Ah, Shadowheart. How blessed I am to be so near. I heard you with Lazel. Don't think I'll play second fiddle to the likes of her. Go try your charms on someone who's out of earshot. Not to diminish our efforts, but... It was rather simple getting here in the end, wasn't it? The obstacles ahead of us promise to be higher still, which will make the pleasure of overcoming them all the more potent. Do you feel that? A darkness, pulling at the strands of the weave. Uh, you'll still be able to do your wizard thing, though, right? Of course. But that doesn't make the shadows less dangerous. Uh, just once. I'd like to find a village that hasn't been plundered and destroyed. Indeed. All the best weapons have already been scavenged. I was thinking about a warm fire and charming company, actually. I am perfectly charming, I'll have you know. On Kresh Kalir, I was known for my dazzling smile and charisma. Well, well. Who's buried here? Flaming fists, harpers, refugees, perhaps. The Shadow Curse has indiscriminate taste in victims. Hmm. May they rest in peace. <gasps> What's this? A clever little hideaway. Not just clever. Rather ingenious. Somehow its construction keeps the Shadow Curse at bay. A little too clever, if you ask me. Watch out for traps. Home and hearth reduced to ruins. The Shadow Curse stole more than the light from this place. That is why it must be stopped. Imagine a whole century of life and love denied the chance to ever take place. Whole generations were denied their chance to flourish. I must put this right. For them. No Shadow Curse here. Wonder why? Couldn't say. Maybe because an entirely different curse has befallen the tomb. Always something, isn't it? Peace and rest are strangers in these lands until the shadows are banished. Moon lanterns to keep the curse back. Burly guards to fight off any monsters. <sighs> I could get used to this place. Don't get too comfortable. We shouldn't overstay our welcome in such a place. <laughs> no, of course. Why stay somewhere safe and comfortable when we could be in mortal peril? Ah, no shadow curse. Plenty of funerary decor. I almost feel at home. Stop gawking at the decor, Spawn. This place is dangerous. Yes, as I said. Just like home. No day. No night. It's as though time itself has abandoned this place. Similar to the astral plane in some ways, wouldn't you say, Lazel? Hmm, hardly. It is said that the astral plane is threaded with light and silver, life-giving and wondrous in all directions. Nothing like this dismal abyss. These words feel unsettling, like they're dangling on the edge between life and death. Isn't that how you feel all the time, Astarian? I thought you'd find it comforting. <laughs> funny. Very funny. Look at this place. Such horrors defy description. Whatever I expected to find lurking in this cursed gloom, it certainly wasn't this. Glimmer of hope amidst the darkness. That's one way of looking at it. You could also say it's a prime target. The one pocket of light in the gloom. Oh, pragmatism. Thy name is Shadowheart. You're not wrong, though. Best we keep our sojourn here to a minimum. Silence can be best. 
Give it a try sometime. <laughs> Beer. Uh, not really my drink, you know. I know, Astarian. You prefer blood. Well, yes. It was a joke. I know that too. It just wasn't funny. A toll house like this would only be merited in the most prosperous of settlements. This was once a thriving trade route. Should it be any wonder? The Chianthas waters carry merchant vessels from as far east as Burdusk, and they wouldn't have brought just trade goods, but song, dance, and custom, riches of the mind and the spirit. So much was lost when the darkness fell. Ah, last light in. Hearth aglow and lanterns lit, just like a hundred years ago. I imagine the vista was more idyllic back then as were its patrons' chances of surviving the walk home. <laughs> Still, though, when you are expecting nothing but desolation, even a small glimmer of hope fills the heart. It's a long time since I was in a house of healing. God, it's depressing. I suppose you don't have much use for hospitals, unless you're seeking to steal their bloodstock. True. Although I don't heal as fast as I used to. The one downside to the tadpole, I suppose. The one downside. I think you might have stopped the count too soon. Blast scars. <laughs> Spell and sword alike were used to ravage this battlefield. Imagine the glorious din of it all. The streaming banners, the charging knights, the piles of severed limbs and heads. Mm, I'd rather not. If it's all the same to you. To think, long ago, the druids feared this market town would grow into a city and threaten nature's realm. Little did we realize what the true threat was. Divination is a skill few can master. The rest of us must simply muddle along, content to view the past with a clarity the future rarely offers. Perhaps I can yet turn hindsight into foresight, provided the curse is lifted. A better way for all. I can almost reconstruct this battle in my mind, unfortunately. At least you were not present. Grim as it is now, it was worse on the day of the battle. A vivid wound upon my memory. I was lucky. I lived when so many did not. It would take me a day and a night to recite the names of all the friends I lost. Poor man. I never favoured tombs. Nothing but vanity. Upon death, mortal remains should be returned to nature to nourish and replenish itself. To seal away that which a person no longer needs is to lessen the Oak Father's bounty for all. I'm not sure Ketherick Thorm approved the most bounteous of bodies. Yes, you are right. He is one sort I would rather seal away forever, to prevent his rot from causing any further harm. Oh, almost slipped there. Mm, you wouldn't be the first, I'd wager. It's been some time since these walkways felt the carpenter's hammer. You gonna catch me if I eat a brick? With my reflexes, I'd catch you before you so much as stubbed a toe. Such hoarding of wealth. A tomb for riches that could be put to better use. I've heard the same said of bears. The kind you take the shape of. They hoard, gorge, and hibernate through hard times. True, but only until the thaw. Then life goes on. This gold may never see daylight again while others go cold and hungry. Huh. A brewery. Why does Wreathwin Ale ring a bell? It was known to be quite the tipple. A cask or two still exists. If you know the right ale keep. You must have good taste. Not me. Can't afford it. Oh, a common misconception. Even the simplest of flavours are elevated by the choice to appreciate them. Don't deny yourself such pleasures. Dark enough for you, Shadowheart. Nothing wrong with a nice subdued ambience. It can help flatter even the homeliest of faces. I'll try to keep my fire to a gentle throb. I am loath to see anyone behind bars. 
It reminds me of my time as a guest of the goblins. That reminds me. How in the nine hells could goblins capture a chap as well-muscled as you? Poor choice of companions, for one thing. Gladly rectified since then. Besides, a large enough pack of scavengers can take down even the strongest of bears. Doing all right, Kale? Oh, you know, still alive and kicking, despite being surrounded on all sides by an endless manifestation of darkness and decay. I feel it too. Here if you need a pick-me-up. <sighs> Waste of space and resources. Gith triage methods obviate the need for such crude facilities. Tell me about these methods. A Githyanki Gustil can summon astral energy to heal most any wound. If a warrior's lacerations are beyond even their ability, the victim is beheaded. <laughs> Efficient. We have much to learn from one another. All gone. Devoured by the shadows. Oak Father, preserve us. It's just like a hundred years ago. Stay strong, Bear Man. We're still here. We are. Yet there is a burden to being the survivor, the witness to others' tragedies. It only grows heavier with time. Bones, rusted weapons. A great battle was fought here. An extra vicious one, I think. No one buried their dead. Exactly the sort of battle I live to fight. And the sort made even more thrilling with a hot-hearted tiefling at my side. Once, you could hear nature's symphony in this place. Now, it is quiet. Quiet and dead. I can make some animal noises, if it'll make you feel more at home. You bleat well enough as it is. Do I see light? Or am I delusional? Just a mirage. There's not a spot in sight that the gloom hasn't touched. Damn. You're right. The eyes see what the heart wants. I have seen many a gruesome death, but even I can't fathom some of the horrors inflicted in this supposed house of healing. You're young, child. If you survive as long as I have, you will witness greater horrors than this. If you are fortunate, you may even inflict greater horrors in the name of your cause. I don't suppose you really have much use for gold, do you, Astarian? Uh, it's not required, but it is nice to have. It buys any number of ways to keep life interesting. Go on then. Coyness isn't in your nature. What would you do with unlimited funds? Let's just say blood tastes better from a gold goblet. And silk bed sheets improve any nighttime activity. Difficult terrain, cursed or not. Gith dragon riders prefer flat land and open skies. Ketherick's undead legions carve paths through the foliage when they pass. It grows back stronger, though. A tedious labor well suited to the undead. Tedious labor does not only suit the dead. Plenty of surface dwellers are suitable for little else. Last Light's defenders. Slaughtered. Every last one. They were arrogant enough to try and withstand Lady Shah's power. This was always going to be the end result. Devoured by the darkness. They should have retreated while they had the chance. And yet here we stand. We're either very clever or very lucky. You do not need luck to survive, Astarian. Not when you have me. Chin up, Halsen. I know you don't favor Lady Shah's darkness, but look, trees. I will not be taunted in this place. Not after all it has taken from me. Show respect or you will force my hand. Is that so? It's quite a hand. The shadows have lingered here so long. The land itself is corroded. A most persistent curse. I think I know a thing or two about persistent curses, thank you. The rashes and sores you may have contracted over your decades of philandering are not the kind of curse that concerns me. 
So this is where you interred Kethrick Thormhausen? Couldn't you have done a little more to prevent his return? We did the best we could under dire circumstances. But you would suggest otherwise? All I'm saying is that it's more difficult to come back from the dead if you were chopped up and had the pieces delivered to different corners of the realm. This place was ruined rather thoroughly. I'm starting to forget what a habitable village looks like. Your Sharon kin are responsible for this ruin. They purged these lands even before the Shadow Curse and pillaged all they could find. No, this must have been due to the battle. Lady Shah's warriors would have little interest in looting. Come, Shadowheart. Do you think prayers alone can keep an army on the march? Not my kin. Not any longer. Their past deeds are not my responsibility. Even those devoted to loss fill their pockets and bellies when the chance arises. You're an impressive fighter, Gail. You should consider a new name. I take it you have some suggestions? The Wizard Wonder. Or how about the Master of the Weave? Tempting. But I think we might already have the maximum number of theatrical titles. Odd that you're fighting Kethrick Thorm again, only this time with a warrior of Lady Shah at your side. They say that history does not repeat, but it does rhyme now and again. This is a rather unharmonious example. Indeed. Shadowheart and Halsin, Sharon and Bear, who would have dreamt of an alliance so rare? Like I said, unharmonious. To think how vibrant this place must have once been. Children playing, merchants hawking, real people living real lives. I know. Can you imagine the noise? This is much more peaceful. Gone. Swallowed up by the Shadow Curse. Worse, they defied Lady Shao's power openly. Now they've paid the price. Not before time. They hope to stand against Ketherick with little more than a trick of the light to protect them. They were desperate. Nobody deserves this. I've known goblin raiders to slaughter entire villages and strip them for loot, but I've never seen one ravaged like this. It's hard to imagine anyone who'd willingly inflict such devastation, be they zealots, marauders, invading armies. A sign of far worse to come, I fear. These people seem soldiers by their bearing. What say you, Lazel? The enforcers of order, unmistakable in their vigilant bearing. So it goes across all the plains and their peoples. On this plane, the story always ends the same way. Order collapses, and shadows take the light. My boyhood texts claim bodies from this battle drifted downriver for a week. Many who deserved an honorable burial had to be abandoned. The Shadow Curse inspired a great haste. That's right. You were there, weren't you? I was. Part of my spirit was shorn away from me here and never left. A distinct whiff of undeath to this place. Though, curious. I can't say I've ever noticed the same about you, Astarian. Uh, my whiff is very faint, thank you. Nothing a little bergamot, rosemary, and a hint of aged brandy can't hide. You've clearly thought this through a great deal. I'm impressed and appalled in equal measure. It's the perfect olfactory disguise for a corpse. Honestly, I miss my calling as a perfumer. How curious. The Shadow Curse has not touched this place. And by the looks of it, its riches have gone unplundered. A faultless observation, Lazel. Are all Gith Yankees so quick to come to the essential point? Death is the blade's companion. Isn't that what they say? I think I preferred it as a metaphor. Tombstones. I'd half expect to get a glimpse of Withers here. Don't even joke about it. Bad enough that he's haunting our camp with his cryptic asides and his overall mustiness. He's useful, 
as the not-so-alive, not-quite-dead go. A Salunite shrine. It would have made my blood boil once just to look upon this. You are lucky to have left that anger behind. I don't know. The anger was simple. I understood it, found comfort in it. Now I don't know what to believe. If you wish to be rid of your devil, Will, we should just kill her and be done with it. And incur the wrath of the hells. I might as well just leap straight into the fires. Halsin, were there ever wolves in these woods? Once, certainly. But not for a hundred years. Any that still prowl this land can scarcely be called wolves any longer. I see. A hundred years is too far back for what I had in mind. No matter. All this stonework has me thinking. Would you ever want a statue of yourself, Will? It seems a rather vain notion to me. But I can't say I haven't thought about it. How about you? I suppose it might be nice to be remembered. Though I'd be less keen on having birds perching on my head forevermore. Think of the, uh, mess they'd make. Well... Better your statue's head than your own. Looks like this town was ransacked. By soldiers, if my eyes don't deceive me. Quite cruelly, too. Must have been an awful day for the people who lived here. If nothing else. I hope it was a mercifully short one. So, have we buried the hatchet, Lazel? No. Why would I bury a weapon? Is it broken? It's a metaphor. I do not know your metaphor, but if you need help digging, I will find a shovel. No signs of life, but the spirits of the past still linger here. Do I note some trepidation? Spirits are but echoes of nature's cycle. Most give no cause to elicit fear. Most, but not all. When I was very young, father told me the dear ones we lose are quiet but ever watchful. I think he meant to comfort me. But I shivered for weeks, thinking I was being hounded by wide-eyed spirits. Since you're the only one in good form out here, I'll trust you to lead the way, Shadowheart. It's a deal, so long as you watch my back. Actually, I've been stripped of that particular advantage. But I will forge ahead, nonetheless. And a girl. The scent of hops and barley is most persistent here, even after all this time. Enough to make me thirsty, even. I've always preferred wine to whiskey and ale, but I certainly wouldn't turn away a full flagon right about now. After the shadow curse, I became overly fond of honey mead and melancholy evenings by myself. Now I rarely imbibe. Only on the most special of occasions. I say we put an end to your dry spell. Once Ketherick falls, the first round's on me. Karlak, were there others of Zariel's warriors who bore the infernal engine? The others were all devilkin. I think I was the only lucky winner from Faerun. I was the first. Not the last. But most didn't survive the process. You were stronger than the others. Lucky me. I'm surprised I never saw you lurking in the shadows at any Baldorian balls, Astarian. Yeah. The city's elite was not my target audience, alas. People ask questions when members of the nobility disappear, and the last thing Casador wanted was people asking questions. Is Drow society as the books say? It almost sounds tempting. Matriarchal power flourishing to its greatest extent. It flourishes because the strong feed on the weak. Charming as you are, child, you would be nourishment for the matron's mothers. Of course. How do you maintain such an elaborate plat, Shadowheart? The craftsmanship is impressive. Now that you mention it, I can't remember who taught me. Another memory lost, perhaps? Still... If you let me watch your technique, I might learn it from you. Maybe, if you keep a respectable distance. Feel that? Guards are giving us the stink eye. Possibly, but I wager there's something deeper at work here. 
Mason's Guild. The Githyanki would call this an Ormalar, an alliance of Mla. And what is a Mla exactly? Builders, craftspeople, and the makers of the incomparable silver swords the Kithraki wield in battle. The Mla may not be warriors, but they are no less valuable to my people. Think the bar is open? I intend to find out. But we should scout around first, see who's in need of help. You're good at staying in character. I'll give you that. Imagine what this place was like on the day of the battle. The ground must have been covered with the dead. A tragedy. Just think of all that wasted blood. You wouldn't actually feed in the wake of a battle, would you? You're not a vulture. Oh, I don't know. I fed on things that would disgust most vultures. Even shaped by shadow as it is, Shah and architecture has a kind of beauty to it. Beautifully intimidating. This place was meant to scare people into submission. There you go, cutting right through the ephemera to the heart of the matter. <laughs> Your finest quality, I think. And here I thought I rubbed you the wrong way. Nothing wrong with a bit of friction now and then. You help me keep my mind sharp. Oh, thanks, pal. I think. A shrine of Saluna, tucked away like an unsprouted seed. Another nature metaphor. I admire your consistency, Halsin. <laughs> when you care about something deeply enough, it consumes every thought and word. <sighs> smell that. Fresh forest air. I smell only fear. The fear of cowards lying in wait for an ambush. <sighs> you can take a day off once in a while, Lazel. I do not take days off. I'd even forego sleep if such a thing were feasible. The one advantage an elf holds over a Githyanki. Shah's armies of destruction arose from within these halls. Those who do not listen to the reason of Lady Shah's words must instead feel the keenness of her blade. You sound like a student, reciting words for a test without considering their meaning. I've considered them plenty. Besides, Lady Shah favours action over words. Try it out sometime. You know, even devils like a good joke. Why are Sharon so, uh, dour? Their belief is grounded in loss. Hardly a laughing matter. The loss of all joy. Sad business. Imagine being compelled to hide a shrine in a land that is actively hostile to you and your goddess. Utter pig-headedness. Mm. Tenacity might be a kinder word for it. I'll leave the kinder words to the softer hearts. You're uncharacteristically quiet, Astarian. Awed into silence. Awed? By this? Please. Size isn't everything. <laughs> At least when it comes to temples. Well, what would impress you then? Oh, I don't know. But a little more colour wouldn't hurt. All the black and purple just makes me think of bruises. Oh. This was a hospital. Feels more like a prison. A common enough interpretation. Sickness has a nasty habit of making you feel trapped, if only within the confines of your own body. I've always relied on the kindness of the healers and menders of the coast. Better a cleric's healing touch than a chirurgeon's scalpel. I once spent weeks convalescing in the hospice of St. Lorpson after a nasty bout of ruddy pox. For all their kindness, leaving that place behind felt like freedom to me. The statuary in here is so triumphal. Even the worst of us can see ourselves as heroes. That is a truth that can evade minds far older than yours, Will. <laughs> you are wise beyond your years. Not wise enough to avoid Sharon's sanctums, apparently. I do like it down here. It's nice. Homey. This temple is positively dripping with power and dark beauty. Is homey truly the first word that springs to mind? This is a dedication to my goddess's power and dark beauty. Homey is not the first word that comes to mind. I dare say you are no longer comfortable in this place, Shadowheart. 
That's an understatement, if I ever heard one. <laughs> True. But you are among friends. Whatever lies ahead, we shall face it together. Thank you. It's all very grand, but so... austere. Did you expect anything else? This is how your gods project power. But why not project power with soft furnishings and roaring fires? Maybe then I'd worship them. Moonrise Towers lies ahead. We're nearing the heart of the Absolute. I'm certain of it. Then let us push forward, heads high, weapons in hand, and turn this tower to rubble. Your confidence is encouraging, but a little premature. Let's keep our eyes on the task ahead. Or I, as the case may be. We're not taking a boat to Baldur's Gate, right? And give the Absolute free reign to use us as target practice from the banks? I think not. Whew. My mum always said that Chionthar was unlucky. The boat's heading to Baldur's Gate. I'm almost tempted to stow away. Chuck. Try to abandon us and it won't go well for you. <laughs> I wouldn't actually leave. After all... Where would you be without me? Never knew Sharon's to be so... military. It shouldn't surprise you. We've been at war with Saluna since before most of history was written. An eternal conflict from the viewpoint of mortals. Problem with eternal wars is they never end. Shar's entire creed revolves around waging war against Saluna. Imagine all the generations of mortals sacrificed in an eternal conflict between sisters. Take it from me. A short, sharp personal vendetta is far less time intensive. Admittedly, I don't care for most people, but this is a terrible waste. Because their lives were cut brutally short, you mean? I... yes. That. <laughs> That's clearly what I was referring to. We're not taking a boat to Baldur's Gate, surely. A nice, leisurely voyage. The idea seems pleasant enough. But knowing our luck, we'd probably end up as easy targets the whole way. Exactly. Not that I'm one to refuse the scenic route, but I think we need to hike it. Finally, we're approaching Moonrise Towers. Oh, nothing escapes the Blade of Frontier's keen senses, I see. Mock me all you want, Astarian. We could use a little comic relief. Yes, that's why I'm mocking you. To keep our spirits up. No other reason. This fortress was a seat of the High Heralds, I believe. Long gone from here, of course. The who now? A council of intellectuals, respected throughout Faerun. Leading authorities on heraldry, of course, but also history, genealogy, and diplomacy. Seems like diplomacy failed if they allowed Ketherick Thorm to take over. Twice. The Masons here thought they were building something to last. How wrong they were. Perhaps it's a blessing that none of them survived to see it fall to the shadows. No need for such a grim assumption. Halcyn helped many to escape these shadows before the town was consumed. Then some masons were more blessed still, if they could put their talents to use elsewhere. Perhaps some of their work even graces Baldur's Gate. Moonrise Towers at last. Make no mistake, I will have answers about these gay tadpoles. Easy, Lazel. We need answers, yes, but you catch more flies with honey than vinegar. Perhaps that doesn't translate. I don't know if Githyanki have honey, or vinegar, or flies, even. Let's just show some restraint. I'm capable of restraint, just as you're capable of raw fury. I trust we'll find reason to exercise both here. I hoped Moonrise would give me answers. But at every twist of its corridors, I find only more questions. Our goal is clear, is it not? We defeat the remaining Chosen and the Elder Brain they control. <laughs> Ambiguity does not come naturally to you, does it, Lazel? Your life must be far simpler for it. <sighs> I'm sweating bullets. What if I blow our cover? 
Simplicity is the key to good deception. If in doubt, try thinking less. <laughs> yes, ma'am. This must have been quite a place in its heyday. Could you ever picture yourself living here, Astarian? You know, assuming the riffraff were cleared out. But I have to climb so many stairs. Anyway, I already have my eye on a palace in Baldur's Gate. Really? Even with all these chambers and the commanding views, you could live like a lord. Tempting. That's not really for me. How long have you been pacted to Mazora, Will? Seven years. Seven years of hunting the monsters of the Sword Coast, and seven years of Mazora's tight leash, and seven years of wondering if I'd ever rid myself of her, or if I even should. Second time's a charm, eh, Halsin? Let's make sure Catherick Thorm is gone for good this time. Indeed. Though, I wondered if you might have some empathy for him, both being former disciples of Shah. Hardly. He's merely one more obstacle, and a killable one, now that Nightsong is free. The right of these prisoners to die in mortal combat was stolen from them. Hardly the worst atrocity the Absolutes committed. One of many, but by no means the least. To die properly is a matter of honor. Moonrise Towers. There used to be more than one tower, of course. The other must have been destroyed. Hmm. I figured as much, being the proud owner of eyes. Sorry, no need for that. Must have put too much salt on my blood sausage this morning. Not at all. Nice to be on the receiving end now and again. Keeps me sharp. Sister, you've got a deal. All those locked cells. A girl could cause all sorts of mischief with skilled fingers and a hairpin. You have done mischief enough with hairpins, if your tresses are an indication. The prisoners would be a hindrance. A hindrance, you say? Remind me, where did we fetch you from again? Oh, that's right. A cage, caught by a couple of tieflings. Interesting. I'd rather an extra burden than extra enemies. Anyone the Absolute has captive is one tadpole away from taking up arms against us. This is no aimless horde. The Absolute's forces are organized. What do you make of it, Gale? All enemies have some chink in their armor, no matter how much they like to believe themselves invulnerable. That's what we must find. And if we don't find any clear weakness? Then we hope our mutual strengths are enough to dominate them. Or we die nobly in the attempt. I itch to draw my weapon and gut every last one of these cultists. You're keen. Just don't get carried away. Some of those guts might be of use to us unspilled, at least for a while. I know better than to indulge every craving, Shadowheart. But when the time is right, the Absolutists will feel the sting of my blade. A hidden shrine, dedicated to the Moon Maiden herself. Even amidst this darkness, Salunites are stubborn enough to cling on. <sighs> Pretty beautiful, isn't it? This is it, Gale. Today, we annihilate the heart of the Absolute's power. The bards will sing of our victory here. Entirely unnecessary. Though, if they are so inclined, I might be convinced to share a stanza or two of my own for inspiration. Prisoners! More like soon-to-be tadpole residences. Every infected prisoner will just make things harder on us. Let's go blast a brine pool, then. At last, we wash our weapons in absolute blood. I like this bloodlust look on you. Whew. Very flattering. Even now, at the cusp, you waste your breath on prattle. Take no prisoners. I doubt many will seek to surrender. But if they do, mercy costs us nothing, Karlak. Nothing but the win. What's your gripe with Saluna anyway, Shadowheart? She betrayed her sister and ruined the balance of things. Imagine turning on those who love you for your own glory. Ready to enter the belly of the beast. Oh, it's the stairs I'm dreading. 
I shall close my eyes and pretend I'm climbing my own far superior tower in Waterdeep. In that case, welcome home. This place is like some moist, unappealing maze. Can your nose guide us, Halcyn? I fear not. The vapors in this alien cloaca are most bizarre. Cloaca? Oh, you could have just said tunnels, you know. I'm nauseous enough as it is. Not a devil in sight. How disappointing. I doubt a few iron bars are sufficient to hold one of Zariel's. True enough. But an elithid pod? That would probably do the trick. I wager you're right. Ah, oh, Gail. What a pleasure to see a genius's mind at work. Oh, this place brings back unwelcome memories of a tadpole slipping behind my eye. Appalling. I am glad my memories of the infection are not so clear. Oh yes, I forgot. You had your love of the absolute to mask the ugly parts. Do not call it love. It was poison. Of course Mizora was Ariel's captured asset. How did I not see it coming? It's in a devil's nature to conceal the truth. You can't fault yourself for that. I've been pacted for seven years on, Gale. I should be able to read between Mazora's lines by now, no matter how narrow the gap. It strikes me that for a mind flayer colony, there are remarkably few mind flayers about the place. Squiddies have gone to war, is my guess. On the Absolute's behalf? Well, there's an alliance I'd have been quite happy without. So many unfortunates must have been infected in this place. Imagine the horrors. I don't need to imagine. I've got the souvenir in my skull to prove it. Of course, thoughtless of me. My apologies. But at least you cannot be infected twice. Or at least, I hope not. <sighs> Can't say I love what they've done with the plays. Unsurprising, really. Fanatical cultists tend to care more for ambience than aesthetics. Hmm. Uh, reason enough to put them all to the sword, I say. It's enough to put you off tentacles for life. You had a taste for tentacles? The Elsong Tavern used to serve excellent calamari. Mind you, that was 200 years ago. A tadpole nursery, as on the Nautiloid. We must not leave it intact. Quite right. So long as the attempt won't leave us similarly dismantled. Caution is commendable. Boldness is extraordinary. In this case, I recommend the latter. We must be ready to confront the Elder Brain. One presides over every Gaith colony. No problem. And what does this old brain look like? A hovering mass of grey matter, sprouted with lethal tentacles and oozing cerebrospinal fluid. Right. Good. <clears throat> Glad I asked. A gay colony. Illithids are certainly the driving force behind this absolute cult. The hierarchy of command is not yet clear, child. Can you be sure the Illithids are in control? I know what I see. My mortal enemies. And I know what must be done about them. Oh, look at all this mucus. Wonder if our nautiloid came from down here. It's a possibility. This is no mere mind flayer colony, but an entire geek bastion. I'm ready for the goo. <laughs> Baldur's Gate. We can't get there soon enough. I can only hope we still find time to vanquish the curse. I can think of little else. You can talk of little else too. I make no apologies for knowing what is important to me. We have lifted the Shadow Curse, but a new challenge awaits us. I am less anxious to find myself in a city. So removed from nature's power, I do not know how I will fare. Oh, stick with me. I'll show you around and square up if anyone bothers you. We've chipped away a piece of the Absolute. It will take all our might, all our will, to fully shatter it. Sobering. To think we've got even tougher battles yet to come. I'm not despairing. Far from it. 
I just hope we're afforded a little breathing room before the next onslaught. Did you expect to survive Merkel's wrath, Little Spawn? <laughs> You'd be surprised, Drow. I've survived a lot of things. Greater horrors await us in Baldur's Gate. Best sharpen your fangs. I saw you pressing a bunch of flowers the other day in a book. Not like you to keep something forever. They'll crumble away in time. But no harm in appreciating their beauty until then. So, Lazel, things seem to be getting serious with you two. Do you have pet names for each other yet? Pet names? As if we were domesticated animals. God, you have so much to learn. Repeat after me. Honey muffin. Sweetie pie. Sugar plum. Honey muffin. Sweetie pie. Astarian, do you see all your lovers as food? I've always felt flames to be a rather perfect expression of love, Karlak. Passionate. Primal. Capable of bestowing the most life-affirming comfort, or inflicting the profoundest damage. That's... pretty nice. Never thought about it like that. But now I will. So, how does love feel about romance? <laughs> Are you expected to bite your mate's head off afterwards? Be grateful I no longer follow the Spider Queen's teachings. If I did, you would be the first to fall into my web. I can't tell if you're joking. She is joking, right? I've been pondering something, Lazel. Why is it the Githyanki have belly buttons? Hmm? When they hatch from eggs? I did not grant you permission to gaze upon my midriff. I, I wasn't gazing. Merely observing. Though that can hardly be said for a certain someone else. Living without sunlight isn't so bad, Astarian. Where I came from, we would often work exclusively under cover of darkness. Yes, but you chose darkness. I was cast into it. The sun was banished from my life. Forbidden. And we all lust after the forbidden. Don't we? I'm glad to know you have a softer side, Minthara. I was beginning to think you rather... heartless. Loving another is not soft, wizard. It is one of the hardest things a person can do. So you admit you found love. Oh, how delightful. I'm happy for you both. So, the more you cool down, the more your love life heats up. Seems that way, but... I'm a bit out of practice, to be honest. I'm sure it'll all come back to you. You'll be as depraved as the rest of us in no time. When we met, Shadowheart, your gaze seemed to linger in the distance on some unseen goal, some insubstantial purpose. I notice now your gaze settles on something, or someone much closer. Is it that obvious? Of course. There's nothing escapes a wizard's powers of observation. Lazel, you're actually glowing. It is the sheen of the soldier's sweat on my brow. The soldier's sweat? Or the lover's? Kincha, speak on it no further. I knew you were a graceful man, Will, but I hear you're quite the dancer, too. <laughs> I've been known to trip the light fantastic myself. Mine was a popular hand at the annual Blackstaff's Ball. I'd have loved to have witnessed it, Gail. I wager you are as elegant on the dance floor as you are on the battlefield. Hey, so what's romance like in the Underdark, Minthara? In Menza Baranzan, romance is commonly a luxury enjoyed between women. Men are mostly present for propagation. Here on the surface, gender does not define one's role so strictly. There are weaklings of every sort. She was a high priestess of House Vandry. Beautiful, elegant, ruthless. I adored her, and had been sharing her bed for some time when the order came that she must die. Oh, no. I stayed with her while the poison did its work and whispered words of comfort as she slipped away. 
So, Lazel, have you ever been tempted to use psionics in your, uh, romantic endeavours? Only once. Did you know, in low-gravity settings, Githyanki can maintain aerial suspension for hours at a time? Fascinating. I think the Archmage Tasha described a spell with similar effect. Really must look that up. Used to your new look yet, Will? I, for one, think you look smashing. You know, I think I am. It certainly didn't put off my, uh, dance partner. Ah, dance. The true language of love. You are debating allowing another into your heart. Quite the gossip, aren't you? Wouldn't have thought you cared. A formidable woman like yourself does herself no favours in revealing herself to be so erratic, so uncertain. I'd watch yourself, my friend. I don't know if our pale rogue has anything good in his heart, or even a scrap of it left for you. <laughs> Excuse me? That's just mean. We're all adults here. Your heart's as cold as ice, Astarian. I'm just making sure no one slips and gets hurt. How's the orb treating you, Gale? Oh, quite well, as a matter of fact. Since it was stabilised, it's been humming along nicely. I have noticed one adverse side effect. I seem to be losing hair in some <laughs> unexpected places. I can only imagine. Half the men of Menzo Baranzan are pleasure servants, weaklings whose beauty is their only redeeming quality. You would fit right in with them, Astarian. You think I'm beautiful? <laughs> Menthara. <sighs> Does your species release airborne pheromones upon beginning the courtship dance, Will? I've heard thus is the way with certain birds of paradise and prey. The chemical induces lowered inhibitions between the pair. No. I mean, I don't think so. Would you count a light spritz from a vial of jasmine dust as a pheromone? Indubitably. You've been smiling like a fool of late, wizard. Explain yourself. I found love. Surely even you wouldn't begrudge me some happiness. All I will say on the matter is that you were wise to lower your standards from the godly to the ghastly. I really hope you're being careful with our friend, Minthara. I wouldn't want you to break each other. If I break them, it will be in the pursuit of pleasure, and they will die smiling. I'm a tad surprised you change into more comfortable garb at Camp Lazel. You strike me as a sleeps-in-her-armor type. It would cause too much noise during my nighttime exertions. I do not wish to alert foes of our location. Nighttime exertions. Oh, I see. Well, considerate of you, I suppose. Astarian, I just want to say, I judged you wrongly. I'm sorry. You aren't actually insufferably randy. You're just insufferable. Really? And how, specifically, have you misjudged my fine character? Any doubts about falling for a foe, Minthara? Or does that just add spice to things? I do not fall for my foes. I vanquish them. I cannot love who I do not trust, with either my heart or my body. I am fortunate to have found someone worthy. I've heard that in Baldur's Gate, wizard is also a term used for one who ensues their more <clears throat> carnal desires. Is that true, Will? Where are we going with this, Gale? Oh, nowhere. Just think it's a rather cruel misnomer. Not at all reflective of the glamour wizarding life affords. Shadowheart, the way you paint around your eyes, they look permanently cloaked in shadow. And yet your bed pillow bears barely a smudge. You are a woman of many talents. It brings me closer to Lady Shah. One day all of our eyes will feast on her endless darkness. No harm in a little mystery. Besides, I think it suits my bone structure. I used to believe the beauty of first love was unable to be surpassed. But Gail, you are so much more tolerable now you found your second. I'll take that comment with the sincerity and goodwill I assume it was intended. 
I knew one of Rythwin's head masons. She was a good woman, and strong as an ox. Really? Uh, are, are strong women your type, Halsin? I don't discriminate against any type. Truly a bear man of the people. So, how was your night with Gale? Did you have a long, hard debate? Oh, ignore him. Astarian envies the depth of our bond because he's of a shallower inclination. Brickwork and stonework. This place is far out of balance with nature. But the Oak Father will reclaim this all eventually. Not too soon, I hope. I have a craving for a soft bed, a hot bath, and a large glass of Arabellan dry. None of which I've ever found hidden under a log. Well, you may thrive, but what of other life? A city is no place for wild creatures. Cities teem with life. Rats, pigeons, flies. They count no less, for all their more pestilent qualities. So many dark nooks and crannies. This fortress is a lurker's paradise. Would you not prefer basking in the sun, like a lizard, now that it no longer blisters your pretty skin? Mm, old habits die hard, darling. Surely you know that. I'm crossing. This place has been a haven, when harpers were less than welcome in the city proper. Seems hard to imagine your efforts haven't always been appreciated. Oh, a harper does not go in for public acclaim. We work in shadow and secrecy. Tragically unacknowledged by the ungrateful herd. <laughs> Sounds familiar. It's always wise to have another redoubt, another escape route. Though, I assumed your lot's antics would have secured you the love of the masses. Lady Shah's children toil similarly, but we know there is no need to seek the favour of others. Our lady's love is all we need. Pigeons, gulls, sparrows. These streets make a fine hunting ground for a tressim like Tara. In the Underdark, we have packs of winged hounds to deal with vermin like your precious Tara. Flying hounds? Come now, you're pulling my leg, aren't you? Yes, I am. It is the bats that would make a meal of her. Well, well. The fabled haunt of Nine Fingers Keen. Never visited before. I thought you got around. I always steered clear. If guild members started disappearing, people would start asking questions. And Cazador hated questions. You know... I've always kind of hated this place. Such a do about a damned bridge. It's just a bridge. Is it really worth all that ire? Come on. Isn't there something you hate for no good reason? Hmm. I dislike owls. Their hypermobile necks are quite disconcerting. You know what, Lay? I couldn't agree more. God, whoever thought I'd be happy to see the flaming fist? Admit it. You're just glad to see some potential meals walking about after all those bloodless shadows. Being in a land of cursed, angry shadows, you start to see things in a new light. So, um, Jahira, do you like to... that is, what do you like to do? As in... hobbies? Oh, well... I like to play music. I suppose. I'm just picturing you strumming on a harp so hard the strings snap and try not to shriek. <laughs> uh, uh, what, what do you play? Hmm. Mostly the same children's rhyme. Only better the whistle of tin. I do not get a lot of time to practice. Oh, spare me the sad eyes, girl. Not every daily deed is worthy of song. Certainly none I can play. I have to ask, Astarian, do people taste different from one another when you feed? Oh, it all depends. A clean neck certainly helps. Come on. You know I'm talking about their blood. Of course. 
There are different vintages. Young Noble is wonderful if you can get it, but Crone has its charms too. Huh. There's something going on here. I don't like it. Careful. I smell an ambush. Are you sure it's not the flowers you're smelling? You may be allergic, but better safe than sorry, I suppose. There is no true authority in this city. The guards are more degenerate than the criminals. True warriors among the city's flaming fists seem exceedingly rare. The worst are mere rats scurrying about their warren. And what do we do with rats, Lazel? We hang them by the tails and burn their warrens. Cowards at every turn in this community. In Githyanki society, they would be retrained or culled. Condoning the slaughter of the weak. Not the most charitable perspective to take. I am observing, not condoning. A meaningful difference. Care for a dip, Will? It would be my pleasure, Karlak. Once the Absolute's been crushed for good. <sighs> Heroics don't leave half enough time for messing. Then let's go digging. Ah, but it is a fine thing to walk with friends beneath the warming sun. Friends might be a stretch, but otherwise, yes, I fully agree. You might have your cloudy locks to keep the heat off your head, but do not forget that Minsk has boo. We will be like twins, eh? We will? God, 200 years and I've never missed seeing my reflection more. I wouldn't mind doing a little shopping in the city. Same. I think I may have overdone it with the black and purple for, oh, my entire life. Your look serves you well, though. I'm ten years behind. Don't want the youths to think I'm not, you know, up with the times. Lady Shah teaches us to abhor superficialities like fashion. Though the city does have some fine boutiques. After a new look? The excess of refugees outside the city walls could easily become a surplus of labourers. Careful, Minthara. As a drow exile, you could be classed as a refugee yourself. Not volunteering, I take it. I am a daughter of House Bainray. I obey no authority except my own desires. I can think of at least one wriggly stowaway who might dispute that. A Kithrax red dragon would have this place down around Gortash's ears in moments. Oh, I'd love to see that. I've always hated this place. It will be far more satisfying to plunge a blade into Gortash myself than to pick through his ashes. You know, I'm starting to remember that Worms Crossing has a bit of a reputation, doesn't it? A tad mercenary, a tad sordid. Anything and anyone for a price. Ah, but to little harm. Shouldn't we all be allowed to stoke a few fires from time to time? You sound like you're speaking from experience, Will. Perhaps you'll have to give me a tour, refresh my memory. <laughs> I'm afraid you'd find my own stories rather tight-laced, Shadowheart. I was never one to sow my wild oats. A puzzle, is it? Boo is most adept at their solving. No matter where Minsk hides the nuts, Boo is always able to sniff them out. I'm rather a dab hand myself when it comes to a spot of intellectual intrigue. The nuts are in my pocket, wizard. Please do not go patting at Minsk's person. I've not heard of these flaming fists. Enlighten me, Will. The coast's chief militia, led by none other than Grand Duke Older Ravenguard himself. Your father, you mean? The very same. Mistra has a shrine within the city, located in the Stormshore Tabernacle, if my memory serves me. <laughs> Do whatever you need to, but I shan't be paying my respects to any of the gods on show. You never felt the call of the divine, Astarian. Oh, I tried them all. None of them answered. I lived two centuries in this city, but it can still surprise me. Baldur's Gate harbors many a secret. Even the longest-lived explorers have yet to uncover them all. Speaking of, what were you getting up to all those years? <laughs> Let's not get into details. If Baldur's Gate can have its secrets, so can I.
Look around you. Indulge your curiosity. Sorceress Sundries is the finest purveyor of magical miscellany for miles around. Where's the axes? What they sell is far more precious than mere sword or shield. They sell knowledge, ingenuity, the wisdom of mages past. Oh, I wouldn't mind a dancing axe of my own. A simple movement charm wouldn't be too hard to apply to such an object. I could conjure one up for you if you like. Yes, I like. Beyond that gate is the upper city, housing the great and the good of Baldur's Gate. <sighs> you yearn for a better class of company, Astarion? <laughs> Gods, no. Who'd want to spend time with anyone, great or good? Gondian artificers might lack a certain worldly wisdom, but there's no doubting they're masters of their craft. You're a child at heart, Gale, admiring wind-up toys and clockwork trinkets. I admire any who follow their curiosity to novel and unexpected means. This is how the world changes for the better. I used to like this neighborhood. It was quieter than inside the walls. Darker, too. Ah, this place never changes. Perhaps it should. All I see are carousing fools. I know. Isn't it wonderful? Endless opportunities for mischief. A good hunting ground, then. Oh, yes. Slimmer pickings, but safer targets. The perfect place to learn the craft. The Society of Brilliance has quite the reputation. Even Water Davian academics refer to their works from time to time. They talk a great deal, but do very little, which may be for the best. I take it you're not inclined to study the wonders of the Underdark? Its inhabitants and cultures, maybe. Its fungi and cave slime, no thank you. What do you know of Umberly Astarian? Oh, lots. Rhymes with undersea, for one thing. Fitting, eh? I... I, I suppose it is, yes. Uh, but perhaps do not refer to her as such. She is a vengeful, capricious goddess. Who knows what may cause her ire? But she's fine with the Bitch Queen. Give her some credit, Halson. The history of the city itself is captured in the archives here. A fascinating resource. Uh, sounds like more your thing than mine. I wonder what those archives will reveal about us a hundred years hence. Only the most excellent and complimentary things. With some encouragement from us, of course. Ah, a glimpse of nature. Like a sip of water to parched lips, Major Hero. Baldurians think all druids to be hay-haired idlers, Halsin. Perhaps we ought not to speak of nature, but uh, high art or politics. I think on them also, but nothing matches the splendor of an ancient tree. It is so. And should one favor bear form, that tree in particular makes for excellent back scratching. I gave my return to Baldur's Gate a lot of thought. I never pictured this, though. Oh, what did you have in mind? A quiet party? Toasting a return with a few good friends? Less quiet party with friends, more days of hedonistic debauchery. But uh, otherwise, yes. Mm, sounds like a recipe for disaster. But you know what? I'm learning to enjoy the taste of chaos. Count me in. You and I may struggle to go unnoticed in such environs, Karlak. True enough. Hard to hide pretty under a bushel. <laughs> I meant more in terms of size. Folk of our stature can be a lure for drunkards seeking a brawl, I have found. Ooh, fun! You know, I've never seen this place in the daylight before. I always loved this park. Spent a lot of time here as a boy battling imaginary monsters. Oh. I was going to say it looks wretched. The dark hid all the kitschy details. The birthing ground of those steel monstrosities. I would feel little sorrow if this place should close forever. Oh, come on. 
You have to be at least a little impressed by the craftsmanship. There's only so much you can do with wood. Not so in my experience. <laughs> there is little I cannot whittle. <laughs> oh. Did you do that on purpose? Never mind the shining squares. I am more comfortable on streets like this. A peek at the true face behind the mask. Yet another thing we have in common. We're two peas in a pod. I said a peek behind the city's mask, Astarian. Not a look up its skirts. Jahira! What do you think of me? This place reminds me of a magpie's nest. Random baubles, doodars and what have yous, all jumbled together without a care. Fun, right? Who knows what you could find? Danger going by past experience. A cursed tome, an unstable spell, a haunted poppet. <gasps> haunted poppet? Haunted poppet! If Nine Fingers survived the fray, she will be right back to work in there. We ought to speak to her. She has you in her thrall, Jahira. Minsk will steal her serpent tongue before it has a chance to twine around your thoughts. That she will definitely have something to say about. Oh, I smell a fight brewing. Then let it brew. Some radical thinkers claim that peace is a valid option, you know. And miss a good barroom brawl? Not me, sir. Ugh, I have no love for the sea. But the city would not be what it is without these ships. That lends them a kind of beauty, I suppose. Indeed. There is no more impressive sight than a Githyanki spelljammer with its astral sails unfurled. A sweeter sight still. The world those ships might make if you plied them between the planes. Interplanar learning. Trade. Trade? Why stoop to barter when you have the power to take what you need? There is an admirable harmony to the Society of Brilliance. Beings of all sorts, united in the pursuit of intellect. Oh, the pursuit of intellect? Fun. Hailing from the Underdark can dampen one's sense of fun, I will admit. Down there, noises such as laughter tend to attract predators. Sounds like a place I used to know. These Steel Watchers are impressive achievements. Worthy opponents, even for Githyanki. In that case, I'll leave fighting them to you, so I can observe your technique. I'm sure you'll find it instructive. Or do you simply want to avoid risking your pallid neck? Perish the thought. We're comrades in arms. I will be right behind you. Do I hear... music? I reckon there wasn't much merrymaking in the hells. You reckon right. Maybe for the best, though. My singing is worse than demonic screeching. <laughs> Perhaps your talent lies in dancing instead. What is this? This place makes me feel sad. Melancholy. Ah, so you're susceptible to the tragedy of a broken home. Maybe you've more in common with us weaker beings than you thought. There's no call to be insulting. Oh, man! Whizbangs! Uh, keep calm, Karlak. One bad flare, and you could blow this whole place. Oh, man! Whizbangs! Uh, better. Drink, dance, and song. Tunarath's residents are known to partake in all three, substantially. Is that so? I assumed there to be little time for frivolity amongst all the fighting. Githyanki writes symphonies, craft liquors, paint frescoes. When they aren't in fierce battle with Geich, of course. Eternity is long, Gale. Long enough to pursue endeavors beyond combat. Are you familiar with the evil works of Nine Fingers and her guild, Karlak? I've heard of her, and... Everyone knows the guild. They're not bad if you know how to work them. Hmm. Boo and I, we are in need of honest berserkers to keep the guild honest in turn. 
Will you show us how this working is done? Sure. The trick is to let them mess with you just once and show them what happens. They won't try again. Minsk means to do no working. When he breaks the Guildmaster, it will be for the fun of it alone. Githyanki Gish sails skiffs through the Astral Sea, an ocean far larger than Umberlees. Does the Astral Sea come with an equally irritable goddess? Vlakith holds dominion over the entire plain, and she is not irritable, she is ruthless. Ah, the smell of adventure, in the very heart of the city. The city's lower intestine, perhaps. Better yet, what swifter way to strike at evil's butt than to crawl through its innards? Oh, man, it's good to be home. First round on who? She who thirsts buys the drinks first. <laughs> you won't pin me down with a rhyme, wizard. She who declines gets the worst of the wines. <laughs> ah, the smell of fresh blood spilled on stone. It reminds me of the tunnels within my home of Kalir. Vicious, unrelenting. The sort of place I imagine you'd take to, Minthara. I would like to visit your home one day, Lazelle. Where is Kalir? You may know it as Stardock. An asteroid, one of the tiers of Saluna. Its tunnels are home to all manner of creatures to hunt. Who is this large man of sternness and stone? Boo mislikes his look, as if he is knowing things that Minsk is not. Relax, the both of you. It's Balderan, our city's valorant founder. Ah, this makes more sense. Some relation to the Balder who owns the gate, perhaps, Boo? It's Balderan, our city's valorant founder. And now, the illithid we carry in that god's forsaken prism. Ah, then Minsk and Boo prefer him this way. Better stern than smug. Phew. Wouldn't mind shacking up in a place like this. Yes. And quite an attractive target for Githyanki raiders. They'd plunder the village and fly off with the spoils. What are you, pirates? To my people, all the plains are a vast garden to be weeded and picked. Well, tell your mates to keep their hoes out of Baldur's Gate. Danthelon's dancing axe. Minsk would sooner fight with a sword, even an annoying one which talks out of turn. I'm surprised you're so fond of swords. A battle axe would seem more suitable for a man of your... stature. The sword is simpler. Only one point, so you know which end the evil goes on. But I suppose a warrior must wield whatever weapon he can. Sword, axe, boot. Minsk once choked an ogre with its own loincloth. <laughs> This smell might be the closest I have come to tasting of death myself. These children and their pets lack discipline. Were they Githyanki, I'd recommend further training. Not everyone approaches the raising of their young with such militaristic vigor. That is the very purpose of training, to determine which children shall be warriors and which are suited to other roles. As for the unruly animals, they would make for nutritious marching rations. Mm, that's certainly one way to make them behave. This place is foul. Drow would not tolerate rivers of waste flowing so close to their residences. You've got slaves to manage your sanitation. Baldur's Gate doesn't. Though we do rely quite heavily on kobolds. But surely the kobolds are slaves. Hell no. Strudge. Yet one more reason to despair for the fate of this city. Umberly. Her clerics possess a nasty streak as wide as her oceans. So their reputation suggests, especially among the good folk of Waterdeep. I'm curious to learn how you fell foul of them. Blasphemy, said the temple priestess. But Minsk says, do not give horns to your statues if you do not wish the visitors to try and make them toot. Yes, that will probably do it.
the Society of Brilliance. These preposterous fools love to meddle in underdark affairs. They are most amusing. Amusing? Wherein lies the humor? They seek to promote peace between species through mutual understanding. Ha! Even my people know the value of a carefully crafted coalition, Minthara. Is our own alliance not a case in point? Not too damn market of an establishment for you, I hope, Gail. Not at all. Why, some of the finest artists and musicians began their career amidst stale beer and sticky floors. Oh, there is poetry to be found in even the dingiest of holes. Ooh, remind me not to attend any poetry recitals with you. Our illithid warns us away from what lies beyond that gate. But perhaps it underestimates us. I care to share any of Minthara's weaknesses. Or would it take too long to go through them all? Watch your tongue, Spawn. I need the Illithid alive. You are expendable. Minsk, you come from an entire nation of berserkers. Give me some of those good Rashomar pointers. Oh, there is much to be learned. Deep breaths, meditative trances, strange and stinking mushrooms. But Minsk could master none of this, which made him sad, which made him mad, which made him the berserker you see before you. Huh. Really? And there is always Boo with the need for nip when anger is slow in coming. This is not how you do it? So, Astarian, vampire dens. What should I expect? Vampires would be a safe bet. Hilarious. You belong on stage. Perhaps the blood-stained sort, with a hooded man standing by, axe in hand. So long as there's a cheering crowd. As for vampire dens, I'd brace your nose. They can be very... Organic. Two sides, each itching to draw blades against the other. The sensation is contagious. Which should we oppose? Either or both, so long as I get to spill blood. Why must the dead three be so obvious and ugly with their decor? Blood and bones, bones and blood. Pointy nonsense. Now, Lady Shah. She has panache. As did Mistra's home on Elysium. Her ribbed vaults and buttresses created a magic entirely of their own. Not to mention her pleasure domes. <laughs> pleasure dome. It's a perfectly legitimate architectural feature. This place is so peaceful. Maybe I should convert. I've done my share of praying to her. Though not for the cause of peace. My faith was suddenly found on choppy seas. <laughs> I give my other horn to watch that. Have you wondered what people will say, Will, when they find out the monster hunter is becoming a monster? I've faced countless perils and conquered them all. This will be no different. I've always had a soft spot for the confident ones. They always disappoint, though. <sighs> Nice to be in a crowd of normal people for once. Really? <laughs> I prefer my company. Extraordinary. Oh, thanks. Don't thank me. Thank Gortash. Excuse you. I didn't need that prick to make me who I am. Oh, you're right, of course. Forgive me. All good, Fangs. You know what would be nice just for a change? Venturing through a mysterious bazaar or a lush, dark wood scented with lavender. <laughs> Not so fond of the sewers, then. They have their purpose. I'd just rather we didn't have to wade through their purpose. Can you swim, Astarian? I'm not sure, honestly. It's been a couple of hundred years. Oh, you're missing out. Loved it as a kid. Oh, this water looks nasty as hell, though. Well, uh, it's not called Grey Harbour for nothing. 
Father always shooed me away from this place. More rats than a water-deep dungeon. And I don't get the sense that my father was being literal. It is most unfair to pour such scorn on rats. They have their place in nature, same as you or I. Fireworks. A particularly gnomish field of art, no? Indeed. More than simple craft. It's a way of life for some of them. That may explain why most gnomes possess such short fuses. Lazelle! Was that a joke? Only if you found it funny. I was barely eight years of age when I heard the counting house held mythical treasure. So, curious little Will tried to slip in. The guard spotted me straight away and dragged me by the collar back to my father. Ha! <laughs> a talking to from the Grand Marshal himself. Quite the introduction to a life of crime. What did he say? Oh, he pretended to be cross. But there was no hiding the sly grin that crept on his face. I love a nice secret hideaway, don't you? I mean, I guess. You can just fill it with supplies, seal up the hidden entrance, and tuck yourself away from the world. Whatever you say, Squirrel Heart. Labor is the lifeblood of every city. Baldur's Gate would perish without its workers. So it is with the Githyanki. Without the Malar's swords and ships, and the gardens of Argilathk, the Empire couldn't thrive. Maybe Githyanki and humans aren't so different after all. Let's not get carried away, Well, Astorian! Fish! Astorian! Minsk, please, slow down. Use your words. Minsk has thought of how you might be a more virtuous vampire. Feast on fish instead. They are made of naught but neck. It's a sweet thought, but, um, fish just doesn't have the flavor of full-blooded red meat. No, you do not agree, Boo. I told you you have been spending far too much time around the Pale One. When I was a child, Father sent me to Sharesh's caress to deliver messages. How was I to know what went on behind its closed doors? Eating, sleeping, and sex acts of all manner, of course. <laughs> What's plain to you wasn't so plain to Minnie, Will. Minnie Lazel wasn't so sheltered. On Crush Kalir, very little is hidden behind doors. So, why night orchids? They remind me of some place. A place I can't quite remember. But I think I was happy there, wherever it was. <sighs> Sorry, I'm being silly. <laughs> You're cute. Well... Isn't it enough that they're beautiful? You might be right. Mercenary they may be, but Father always demanded discipline from the Flaming Fist. Seems some grew unruly in his absence. Your father made a fine job of polishing them up some. But a sellsword is still a sellsword. They are just following their nature. And you think the Harpers are more dutiful? I should hope so. They certainly don't get paid half so well. Hey, Shaddy. Got a quick question about the best way to treat an infernal burn. Shaddy? Really? Uh, hearty? Shadsy? Or maybe just the fringe? <laughs> Shadowheart will do just fine, thanks. Love is making you fanciful. Oh, I do not know, Boo. If you buried the nuts here before we were stoned, I am thinking they might have gone bad. Minsk, enough! The hamster isn't saying a damn thing, and you know it. Well, Starion, Boo is of good breeding, and so only speaks when he has something nice to say. Perhaps this is why he has never seen fit to speak to you. <laughs> How delightfully vicious. I'm beginning to like the hamster. Amusing as it is to provide children with such lethal toys. Surely there are better uses for this powder. Plenty. They can make for excellent distractions should you need to make a quick exit. 
Partly why the Ducal Council controls supply. The Ducal Council must have sprung a leak, for we seem to find barrels of the stuff everywhere. Smell that, Karlak? Uh... Fish? Well, yes, but also trouble. Huh. Your nose is better than mine, pal. I must admit, some of the items here are quite marvellous. Baldur's Gate prices, though. Not worth it, if you ask me. I shall be careful not to ask you then, child. These steel watches are big as hell. Hmm. All the more cracks and crevices for a wild shape to ferret into. Huh? Gum up the works a little. I don't know what that means. I'm reminded of a book father kept hidden in a drawer. The Salty Mermaid. Do you know of it, Shadowheart? The pinnacle of good trash. Even I can't forget that one too easily. Your father was a man of fine taste. Fabian ran his calloused fingers along Allura's scales. Her tail quivered in response. Taste me, Allura pleaded. Fabian smashed his lips against hers, and their tongues twisted together like two eels in the sword sea. All of these statues... Could they, too, be heroes all, frozen in stone until this city has need of them? The Harpers keep records of those who fought for the city. I think I would recall mention of a bare-ass little cherub in all our story and song. Well, Boo would also think you would have noticed when Minsk himself was frozen for over a century. Do you know? I had forgotten just how catty your hamster could be. Ah, the memories. The blushing mermaids where 15-year-old Will snuck his first kiss. Uh, you didn't kiss anyone until you were 15. Gods, what a tragic sheltered life. Sheltered? Not at all. I was exposed to all manner of riot and revelry. Hells, my father even urged me on once or twice. But I've always been a bit old-fashioned on these matters. I find more pleasure in a courtly dance than a loveless fling. A dead and foul place. Only a villain would nest down in these tunnels. Hang on. Weren't you living in the sewer? Entirely different. That was foul only in its smells and the way our water tasted. But it was home. Fair enough, buddy. Home is where the heart is anyway. Ah. In that case, home is in my pocket, nestled on soft bed of flesh and fluff. Umberly, a brutal goddess from what I understand, without even the slightest touch of subtlety to her. Subtlety isn't exactly your forte, given how you've strolled about wearing a circlet inset with Shah's symbol. That's different. You'd be surprised how easily Lady Shah can hide in plain sight. People go around blinkered. Caught up in their own lives. On that matter, you'll hear no argument from me. Besides, it suits me. You'd be surprised how people can miss what's in plain sight. I miss the fact that Shah was deceiving me. Besides, I have a new look now. Suits me, I think. Minsk has never trusted places such as this. Too much of a wizard's power can be simply packaged and picked up. Well picked up by all but Minsk. When he touches the many delicate little jars, oh, how the wizards shout and stare. Fear not, Minsk. You have a wizard at your side who positively encourages such curiosity. You'll fit right in. Obliged, wizard. Should we find our way to a weaponsmith, Minsk will rough you up a little so that you too can fit in. Ho! Hello? Hey! So, are you greeting invisible beings or just losing your mind? <laughs> the echoes, listen. They're coming from three directions. Losing your mind it is. Probably the tadpole. The weirdest things seem to be. The blade of frontiers, hmm? Do you always need to be the centre of attention? Anything but. I don't fight to be flattered, Lazel. I fight to save lives. Spent a lot of time in this park as a boy, 
battling imaginary monsters. So before you were Blade of the Frontiers, you were Pointy Stick of the Park. How did the imaginary monsters compare with the real thing? The monsters of my play fights were strong, vicious. Trolls with hulking muscles, werewolves with sharpened fangs. But the greatest villains I faced as the Blade, they look more like you and me than they do the beasts of my fantasies. Jahira, Minsk's memory of his last time in this taproom is a little uh, fuzzy. Did he... Fear not, Rashimar. It has never been your way to overindulge. But you did offend one of my contacts by letting Boo pedal around in her tankard. Pewter, I believe. She cracked it over your head. Oh, praise the three. Minsk was afraid he had shamed himself. I will, uh, leave a copper at the bar. Best leave two. I correct her with my own afterward. She was drinking grog. Boo's backside could only have improved it. The city fell under Gortash's charms without him casting nary a spell. Well, most people are idiots, Will. You can lure them into a dragon's more if you promise a bag of sweets. The people aren't stupid, Astarian. They're scared. Gortash provoked a damned war and then promised them safety. Safety, sweets, it's the same principle. Damn. I swore I'd never come back to the hells. And here I am. Fate has a way of pulling us along with or without our approval. Escaping fate happens to be my speciality. Gail, you will perhaps be able to explain where Boo has not. What exactly is the difference between a devil and a demon? Ah, a fascinating question. One that boils down to which criteria we choose to apply. Are we speaking about the physiological, theological, etymological? Uh, just how to kill, Ikul. Oh, then for your purposes, they are exactly the same. Amazing how the city can seem almost peaceful at times, knowing all that goes on out there. All that goes on. Consider the numbers. Someone out there must be having the worst day of their life, being robbed, evicted, widowed, who knows. Then, easy prey for Lady Shah. If that's true, then so must be the opposite. There are people out there celebrating their lives' best moments. A wedding to their betrothed, a new baby, a windfall, the taste of an exquisite pudding, I always wondered what a vampire's lair would look like. Can't say I pictured it being quite this... theatrical. I find it surprisingly similar to Queen Vlaketh's aesthetic. That makes sense. She does have a flair for the dramatic. A Githyanki warrior hardly needs to be told that. My first visit to the Undercity. A haven for undead, or so my tutors said. Shadow people roaming shadow streets. There's little more to learn down here but some depressing ways to die. Odd. I'd expect a flaming fist or four to be stationed nearby. They stick to sunnier streets. Heavens forbid they disrupt any of that guild business they're so well paid to ignore, hmm? The fist aren't what they used to be. I grieve to tell you, Will. They never were. What a pest hole. Can't wait to clear this place out. There will be much trading of threats and insults, no doubt. But Minsk will be ready when it is time for Boot to meet Butt. You and me both, pal. Ready your weapons. This will not be resolved by wits alone. You're right. Though, I like to think my wits are the best weapon I have. Your high regard for your own wits is no secret to anyone. Touché, Lazel. Perhaps wits are contagious. If Minsk had any hairs on his head, this place would set them all as standing. And look how Boo bunches his hackles. We three have come through darker places than this together, Minsk. And hamsters don't have hackles. Does Jahira not set your heart to these, Boo? It is comforting to know that one so wise can be so wrong. Ominous yet austere. This place has its charms.
<laughs> We're both learning a lot. Casador kept this place all to himself. I do not blame him. It is not the sort of place servants or spawn should sully with their presence. I smell danger on the wind. Keep your weapons ready. The only thing the wind's carrying is the smell of trout, Lazel. We're near the fish market. I get it, Lazel. Peril, danger, and so forth. All I can think of now is a nice fish dinner. Discount my warning at your peril. The graveyard's ancient, but the graves are fresh. Oh, feeling at home. I haven't set foot in a graveyard since I became a spawn, thank you. Vampires are nothing like those other undead. True. I've never heard a mummy complain about a wrinkled doublet or sour wine. Baldur's Gate's sewer system could use a few improvements. The smell getting to you, Lazel. It isn't the smell that bothers me. It's the inefficiency. An entire underground wasted on waste that could simply be teleported to wild space. Hmm. Once the Absolute's finished, I'll be sure to propose your idea to the Council. Cazador always warned us to stay clear of this neighborhood. Never said why, though. Uh, the last spawn who tried was uh, sunk into the cobblestones and left for the sun to find. I had an unfortunate taste for theatrics in my youth. Ah, yes. That was probably it. God, who knew such a vile abscess lurked in the bedrock of the city? The very stone reeks of misery and despair. There's magic here, but it's of a rancid, impure form. Nothing like the true weave at all. This is why I appreciate a sharp blade to a ball of fire or a bolt of lightning. The weave is inconsistent, unruly. The weave is constant, but its users, anything but. We must be on our guard. What sweet relief to shelter from the sky for a while. Sunlight giving you a headache. You're not supposed to stare right into it, you know. That was due to your insipid conversation, half-elf. I expected a temple to murder would be more fun, a little joyous even. There's no greater pleasure than battle. You face your enemy and conquer them, blade to blade, spell to spell. But to take a life unawares is no more to be celebrated than plunging a dagger into a trapped rat. Oh, I don't know. I've killed plenty of rats. I celebrate it every time. Mm. A sad shrine kept by the lunatic and the lost. The last time I was here, I promised myself I would die beneath open sky. I have not changed my mind. Nor should you. Far better to feel a cool breeze on your skin than whatever foul explorations blow through these halls. It might seem a bit ramshackle. But this place is a boastworthy bar. A bar is only as good as its cellars. Which vintages can we expect to find on their racks? Here, a bottle is judged more by its ability to crack heads than the quality of its contents. Ah, if that's the main criteria, then I shall reset my expectations accordingly. Water it is. No, this place feels all too underdarky for me. You are speaking of my home, Spawn. It is pleasant to be reminded of it. Oh dear, you're not going to come over all pleasant and homely, are you? To you, doubtful. Sibu, they have made their repairs. The owner once used Bu to mop up her ale, and she and Minsk had a discussion on the matter. Trouble seems to seek you out, Minsk. <laughs> I know the feeling. The larger you are, the more likely someone wishes to test themselves against you. <sighs> Minsk sometimes wishes he was small as Boo, so that he might sit and listen to the storytellers in peace. Perhaps you should study the druidic arts. With wild shape, you could make yourself as diminutive as you please. Smaller than Boo, even. Archdruid. You are as formidable in mind as you are in muscle. I'm probably more at home in the water than you now, Astarian. 
<laughs> Probably. Although I am 200 years out of practice, running water is no place for vampires. But uh, perhaps I'll join you for a dip. Once everything is done, then we could see who's best. Uh, Bu says the many colors remind him of home, but Minsk has never enjoyed these fireworks. They may have their purposes. You could cast fireballs of sorts without having to spend years studying magic tomes. Oh. Oh. Ho, 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 ho! Gather the sparking sticks, Boo! With sword in one hand and these in the other, we need truck with wizards no more! I must tell you, Shadowheart, the bathing waters here leave much to be desired. The ablutions offered at the Temple of Beauty in Waterdeep are far superior. And they have the most excellent soaps. I was wondering why you always smelled like a wealthy dowager. Who adorned these walls? Better to have hung a mirror and taken a good long look at themselves. A bloody display of murderous power. Baal means to stoke fear, make us cower. All it does is make Minsk wonder if Boo has already eaten this villain's eyes. So... You decided to bind yourself to your goddess, Shadowheart. That's ironic, coming from you. I'm sure. But you might have learned from my experience. The gods demand more than vows when calling followers to the altar. So you wish to be a god, Gale? You know the wizard Irenicus attempted the same thing by leeching divine blood from a ball spawn. Ah, transfusion! An interesting strategy. Hard to get hold of a god's blood, of course. But, if one could... He managed it. After murdering my husband. And torturing my friends and I for half a year. Did I say interesting? Oh, <laughs> I meant terrible, of course. Terrible strategy. So, Gail, uh, got any book recommendations for me? You can read? <laughs> Very funny. Yes, I can read. School put me off big, boring tomes. Sometimes I wonder what I'm missing. Ah, say no more. I'll find the perfect book for you. I might even lend it to you from my library in Waterdeep. Ooh. Ooh. Something with magic, please. And no devils. Tell me, Shadowheart, how does Shar's favour feel? Does it fill you up? Bring you joy? A nice vintage or a comfortable bed bring me joy. This is much more than that. This brings me purpose. Oh, so humbly spoken. Perhaps you are a different breed than the last Mother Superior. Time shall tell. At the very least, I can learn from her mistakes. You're old as sin, right, Halsin? You must have lots of good stories. <laughs> A few, but people always warm to the most salacious chapters. They forget how much I study, meditate, and, as a bear, hibernate. <laughs> I must have spent a hundred years or more asleep. Ah, oh, sleep and adventure. Maybe I'll come back as a bear in some future life. Lizelle, my brief time on the astral plane left quite the impression. You must miss it dearly. I don't hail from the astral Jahira. My glimpse was as brief as yours before we were cast back to the material. If only I might have remained there. Oh, to soar the skies above Tunarath atop a red dragon. <sighs> must be lovely to have a swim without boiling all the fishes alive. Sounds pleasant to swim with you. At a distance. It's usually so freezing. Don't ask me to make a hot spring for you two. It might work, but I also might cook you like lobsters. You've quite the appetite, Halson. I'd wager you've bedded more of your foes than you've felled. Hmm. A challenging sum. The Chimera has three heads, but does it still count as one? Must have been a challenging kill. Kill? 
Yes. At what age do you think it is right to set a child upon mortal combat? The moment it can hold a blade. It may even test its resilience against some common poisons while it is still in the womb. Squaw, we do not willfully risk our young until they are of 13 years. No point wasting battle flesh before it's primed. Shadowheart, you should know. Viconia was not half so heartless as she liked to appear. I knew her well enough. You might have traveled with her for a time, but she trained me. What's your point? Only that I find it hard to believe that she could have raised you and felt nothing for you. Perhaps she took some pride in her work, forming me to Shah's liking. She certainly relished wielding the rod. But who knows? Perhaps someone else made her that way, as she tried to do to me. I find the locals' fascination with the beach is but a conspiracy for prudes to leer at each other unquestioned. Why does anyone bother wearing swim garments at all? I'm not inclined to bother myself, but I suppose it keeps the city watch at bay. Some act as though displaying bare flesh is a more heinous crime than murder and robbery. Karlak, do I see you gazing long at Boo? You wish to have a hamster of your own, I think. I wouldn't say no. But really, I was thinking, how old is he, Minsk? Karlak, Minsk and Boo thought better of you than to be so concerned with looks. And he's always looked the exact same. No chance Jahir has been swapping him out every few years. Do you have elder siblings, wizard? You're about to say something awful, aren't you? In Menza Baranzan, after a house has two sons, every subsequent male-born child is slaughtered at birth, as it is useless, even for breeding. You have the aura of a third child about you. Shadowheart, I saw you pluck Boo from the ground when you thought no one was watching. It pleases you to hold him? And you have truly cleansed yourself of Shar. I suppose you're right. On both counts. Hmm. Then for one day only, you may carry him in your pocket. So long as it is clean, padded, well aired, and full of nuts. Have you ever been afraid, Karlak? Truly afraid? You know how much time I spent in the hells, right? Of course I've been scared. I kept on going, though. Knew there'd be better days on the other side. And here they are. Who will not permit himself to be held by you any longer, Shadowheart? He fears you will sacrifice him in some sharen ritual of dark oils and leather. Oh, he's far too precious for that. I'll go find a comely barmaid or guardsman instead. I may not weep for my home but I would take a mushroom over a flower any day. I would have said I admire fungi as well, until I met such a thing you call a myconid. Isn't it so that every time you speak as you cast a spell, you're endeavoring to call upon Mistra? I'm surprised she still listens to you. She has no choice. She's sworn to hear all magic users, even me. I'm sure she at least stuffs her fingers in her ears to muffle my invocations. Baldur's Gate can be dirty, overcrowded, dangerous. But I do like it all the same. Found anything to admire in it, Lazel? Admire it? As an overripe fruit ready for plucking, or a fattened calf awaiting the knife, perhaps. This place was constructed as if it wants a foreign power to pillage it. Halsen, if I were a druid, what animal do you think I'd be? Given your memory issues, perhaps a goldfish? Hmm, I'd hope for something a bit more exotic. But would you carry around my fishbowl? Feed me flakes of food? Only the finest, of course. Fiend worship. I'm not trying to pick a fight, Will, but it really seems like a blatantly ill-advised idea. It's the furthest thing from my mind. Besides Shadowheart. Not all fiends are cut from the same scorched cloth. How do they differ, then? The number of horns? The exact timbre of their evil laugh? 
Could be most anything. Their willingness to torment their travel partners with wisecracks, for example. I hope my home can be yours, if you don't go back to the skies. Chuk. I have no intention of allowing myself to grow a third stomach and a withered arm in a ducal seat. I meant the gate, but you're always welcome for tea. I cannot tell if you are more a deviant or a debutante, Shadowheart. I'm not quite sure I like where this is going. I would like to test both aspects of your character when next you find yourself alone at night. No, Boo. Istarion is a friend now. He would never bite you. Yes, vampire? Yes. I mean, uh, no. I am not interested in biting the rodent, is the point. Not least because he ugh, lives in your trousers. A gallows? <laughs> Nooses are for amateurs. That's what I was taught in the grotto. Do you know how badly those things can go wrong? I'd rather not think of it, Shadowheart. You could strangle them by accident, use too much rope and break off their legs, and if it goes really badly, you could wrench their heads right off. What a picture you paint. Quite detailed, quite colourful, quite unnecessary. I can tell when we're getting close to a Mind Flayer area because everything starts to smell purple. That's either profoundly poetic or childishly simple. I'm going with poetic. A compliment from Shadowheart. I'll put it on the shelf with the rest of my achievements. We drow are sensitive to psionic power, and this place throbs with mental power such as I have never known. It threatens all of us, Gith and Mudworld are alike. But even the brightest blaze can be extinguished. Extinguish it? I intend to seize it. Power exists to be wielded. We're getting close. I do believe fate is shuffling the cards for the final deal. Let the cards fall. We have a strong hand to play. And speaking personally, I intend to cheat. Whatever the outcome of what's just ahead, it will be the stuff of legends. In that case, someone needs to survive to tell the story. My money's on you, Will. I'm betting on all of us. I cannot help but feel that destiny is tightening its grip on our forward path. Win or lose, we're nearly there, right? Indeed. But I just wanted to take the chance to say, it has been a pleasure, Karlak. The feeling's highly mutual, Bear Man. And now another final battle. This small band has gone further than any army could have in its place. You didn't seek to gather the Harpers for one last charge. Fodder for heroic ballads yet to be written, perhaps. Not at all. Harpers fight dirty. A well-timed strike with the knowledge of just where to place it, and suddenly superior numbers count for nothing. You must have been following the example of Lady Shah's children, then. They do say imitation is a form of flattery. Sounds much like the Sharans. Hopefully that's where the similarities end. Karlak, this brain we go to bully, Bo has suggested it is large. Wizard brain large? Bo brain large? Like, as many Boo brains as a mortal mind can fathom. It's an elder brain after all. You heard of those? Honestly, I'm not completely sure. But I know it'll be no match for you, me, and the hamster. Of course! <laughs> what is an elder brain? The end must be near. No regrets, Gale. You may have been better off staying inside that boulder. Unlikely. Had I stayed there much longer, the orb would have reduced it to rubble. Besides, think of all the fun I'd have missed out on. Fun? Well, yes. I suppose we did manage to make the best of things. Our great adventure nears its climax. If I should fall, I want you all to know it's been an honor to fight beside you. You will not fall, Warlock. And if you do, Minsk shall simply pick you up again. What? Do you doubt us in this final hour? Yeah, but you... 
You're Minsk. And you are Will of the Pale Eye. Now hush, and turn your mind towards our many, many, many enemies. I fear I've been rather hasty to judge you, Astarian. One heartbreak was quite enough for me. But to experience it as many times as you have it must change a person. Thank you, Gail. But let us both hope that broken hearts are a thing of the past. I think it's a true shame that your goddess doesn't allow for love. Do you regret it? I could never regret fulfilling my life's purpose. Besides, Lady Shah may afford me a little wiggle room. Gail, Minsk worries you might send a fireball up his butt with all of this stringy hair in your face. Is that why you keep your head shaved? I assumed it was a custom of some sort. Oh, no. <laughs> Most warriors of Rashiman wear long battle braids weighed down with stone. Minsk can show you when next we camp. Thank you, but I'm more wizard than warrior. Not sure my scout would stand up to such a platting. Archdruid, you appear to gather a rather fanatic following wherever you go. A noble thing to serve nature so tirelessly. I welcome all of nature's blessings, whether they come to me one at a time or in multitudes. There is no shame in it. Consider me put in my place. Clearly, I have been spending too much time among the city folk. The more I learn of this plain Astarian, the more I believe love is its greatest disease. Oh, I don't know. The screaming fever is pretty bad. It makes you less watchful. We're panting after battle, and already your moors are glued. Am I to understand that you are in love now, Karlak? I sure am. If there's hope for me, there's hope for anyone. Astarian, I note you and your lover struggle to keep your hands off one another. We're having fun! I would say try it, it won't kill you, but in your case, I'm not sure. So our vamp isn't so heartless after all. <laughs> Rich of you to talk about someone else's heart, Carlac. But I must admit, my chest has been feeling a touch lighter recently. <laughs> it suits you beautifully. Yes, most things do. Ah, fine, boo. Lazel, my hamster wishes me to tell you. You are the most beautiful thing he has ever seen. I'm afraid I can't return the sentiment, but I know of some Githyanki who would find him quite appealing. Mouth-watering, in fact. You know, Astarian, I'm not sure I can trust you anymore. You're... different. A bit scary, to be honest. I have one person who trusts me completely. That's enough for me. Treat them right, or you'll have me to answer to. I can whittle up a good steak in no time, if the mood takes me. Oh, what a delightfully secluded alley. I would have been in my element here once. Understandable, when the answer is invariably, the silver-haired one ate them. But you consort with a better class of people now, right? A different class of person and a different type of consorting. Let's just stop this conversation right here, shall we? Wild shaping must sprinkle some spice on your love life, Halcyn. <laughs> Indeed it does. Did you never experience such delights with Mistra? I uh, hear the gods enjoy taking on the form of swans, horses, eagles and the like when visiting with mortals. Oh, no, quite the opposite, actually. She mostly preferred our interactions to be abstract and incorporeal. Most invigorating. You have shared your new power with your lover, Astarian. I'm surprised. I expected you to turn your back once you got what you wanted. <laughs> quite the opposite. I need someone I can trust. And now I know they'll never betray me. I found an empty bottle of venom in camp, Minthara. Safe to assume it was yours? Indeed. 
I have been dosing my partner while they sleep by my side. They refuse to take it in their food, but I must build up their immunity in case we ever visit Menza Baranzan together. Let's never speak of this again. Do not think your twinkly-eyed wiles will work on us, vampire lord. Oh, I know I could never tempt you. But maybe your little friend would like to perch on a more elegant shoulder. Do not look into his eyes, Boo. Think not of nesting in his thick and downy mane. You'll never know unless you try. Just once. Maybe you'll like it. Tell me, Lazel, is it common for Githyanki to fall in love? Githyanki have playmates, thrill partners. But I've never heard anyone profess love, nor read of it in our slates. Love. Is that this feeling in me, then? This passion to peel every layer of one's heart, to see what light and shadows lurk there. I doubt I am the first Githyanki to... to feel this way. But few would ever declare it. I hear things got wild between you two. I hope no one was too badly mauled. <laughs> We're all in one piece. Perhaps you'll join us next time. <laughs> it's bad enough having one person with fangs trying to keep control of themselves. Two of us could be... dangerous. I'm probably going to regret this, but Gail, if I'm to be wed, would you like to make a speech? Oh, you've asked the right wizard. My oratory skills have left many a wedding guest weeping in their seat. Promise it will last less than half an hour? I can promise it will feel like less than half an hour. You say you have had many lovers, Astarian. If that is true, where are they now? Mm, they weren't lovers. Not in the way that you mean. They wanted me more than I wanted them. I used that to my advantage more times than I care to remember. Halsin, you must have accumulated considerable wisdom on matters of the heart in your long life. Anything you'd like to pass on to a strapping, love-struck wizard such as myself? <laughs> Dispensing advice on matters of the heart would be like swapping boots. What suits me may be a poor fit for you. Ah. Well, there's no faulting that logic. At least you didn't tell me to be myself. Oh, no, perish the thought. That can be outright cruel advice to offer in certain cases. So, what's it like caring for someone other than yourself, Minthara? It takes less work than you devote to maintaining your foppish facade. And it's far more rewarding. You have never tried it, I assume. <laughs> Gods, no. It sounds like a lot of work. Nature affords us few greater powers of healing than what love can provide, Karlak. I was concerned that your pursuit of a cure might cloud your final days. I am glad I was wrong. Me too. Even with so much at stake, in this little heart of mine... I've never been happier. Uh, marriage, Will? I thought you'd have learned not to get trapped by devious contracts. I was planning to invite you to the ceremony, but I'm having second thoughts. Oh, I'd love to come, as long as I can sit with someone fun. Mizora, perhaps. I heard what took place at Saluna's shrine, Shadowheart. Was such defilement truly necessary? Lady Shah demanded an offering, and I provided. Are you truly that scandalized, Halsin? More disappointed, I would say. Sounds like jealousy to me. I couldn't risk your wild side getting too excited at the scent of blood. So, Astarian, I hear your relationship has taken on a new aspect recently. My life has taken on a new aspect. It's only natural that my relationships change as well. As the vampire ascendant, I can grant my lover immortality and bind them to me forever. Hmm. I trust you speak of the bonds of love, not the shackles of servitude. 
You consumed all this spawn in your service, Lord Astarian. You shall have to fend for yourself a while. Oh, I've never had trouble attracting foolish, pretty people. Nor did Kazador, it seems. Jahira! You think I'm pretty? I heard you learned how to swim, Shadowheart. Well done. You know, if you and your love ever wish to enjoy the waters with me, I could attempt a kelpie, or even a porpoise. Depends. Are you buoyant? I may need a life preserver if I get in over my head. If you're feeling faint off your bout with Kazador, Astarian, I don't mind donating some blood. Uh -huh. When you're still full of that netherese bile, I'll pass, thank you. Besides, I have someone else to nibble on, and they are delicious. Very quick to say forever to your newly betrothed, weren't you, Blade? Forever could be tomorrow. Better to promise to do your utmost, as long as you have the moments left to share. Scant few times I've seen youthful partnerships end well. But if anyone was formed to thrive in one, I think it may be you. I am glad it is your non-vampiric charms our friend has fallen for, Astarian. It is, isn't it? Of course. <laughs> is it so unbelievable that they were simply like me? If you insist on prying, <clears throat> perhaps you'd care to join us and see how much we enjoy one another. Why? Do you require some instruction on how the deed is done? <laughs> I'm sure even I could learn some new tricks from an old veteran such as yourself. So, Gail. You laid with a goddess. You must have some sordid tales to tell. Sordid? I lay with the mother of magic herself. What we had was... transcendent. Euphoric. Incandescent. Not sordid. You actually made sleeping with a goddess sound boring. <laughs> Incredible. It's funny seeing you so smitten, Minthara. Didn't think you were able. I took my first lover before you were a spark in your father's eye, child. Oh, go on. Astarian, I'm astonished. To relish an intimacy again after such hardship is a wound many never recover from. Are you charging for this sage advice, or is sticking your nose into my business just a hobby? Just all you will. I believe now in your honest heart. So, Will, you have your mind set on marriage. Why not? If this adventure has taught me anything, it's that life is fragile, and we should seize joy when we can. You think I'm being rash? Not at all. The world does not wait around for us, so take your moment while you may. Damn what anyone else thinks. So long as you serve a proper meal at the wedding. None of this finger-picking nonsense, yes? It's good to see you smiling, Lazel. A momentary spasm of the jaw. But perhaps there is cause. Even in this dark hour, there are some things to take heart in. <sighs> Couldn't have said it better myself. To give oneself wholly, and to have a lover totally in your thrall? <laughs> a harmless game, until it becomes real. I worry for the two of you, Astarian. Uh, must you take everything so seriously? We're both happy with our arrangement, and that's all that matters. For your sake, I hope some of it is just a fantasy, deep in your heart. You've a love-struck look about you, Karlak. Just do not let it distract you from the task ahead. But what if I really enjoy being distracted from the task ahead? <sighs> Where is the barbarian rage? I have been learning so many colorful phrases from you, I was hoping to inspire a few more. Mom, you've been inspiring me since I was yay high. Gail, I've heard you talking in your sleep. Your mate needs better rest for our journey. The mind absorbs much while we believe ourselves dormant. 
To lie beside Gale of Waterdeep is positively educational. And deprive them of the pleasure of hearing my nocturnal postulations? I'd never be so cruel. You look happy, Shadowheart. Like a night orchid in bloom. It must be all the fresh air since the crash. Has me flush. It looks good on you. You must be imagining it. It's all over your face. Our leader is a fool for love, Minthara. I'd never be compelled to conduct such a poorly planned jailbreak. They did not do it for love. They did it for my prowess in combat, as well as coitus. I excel in both. As do I. Sometimes the acts are not dissimilar. To have someone who cares about you and throw them away. I don't know how you do it. Any restriction, any tether must be shed. Surely you understand that. It's a form of freedom. If a tragic one. I've had enough tragedy in my day. You have too. But Shah's got you in a chokehold. It's called an embrace. I suppose you don't receive many. Whatever. To bind oneself to another forever seems a fool's vow. In the gate especially, it's uncommon to marry your first love nowadays. But losing that early love is still the regret foremost of forgotten sorrows. Then by all means, call me a fool. Bo has been speaking to a certain squirrel friend who frequents our camp, Holson. He was turned from a red squirrel to a grey, all by one shocking sight. Minsk thinks you owe him an apology. Apologize for partaking in one of nature's most solemn rites? <laughs> that squirrel should be glad to bear witness. No, Boo, I do not know what this has to do with the bears. Two of my real friends finding real happiness together? Beautiful. Seeing you happy is pretty wonderful, Will. Thank you, Karlak. If you get married, I'm your celebrant. Got it? As if I could ever refuse you. A dinner date. At first your request confused me. But then I became curious. Think you might like to try it for yourself sometime? It sounds terribly understimulating. Depends on the company. Well, good thing for us both I make for riveting company. Minsk has felt Boo's heart is fluttering faster than usual. For our friend the blade is betrothed. Ah, my thanks. Perhaps we might even marry, if fate wills it. If you cannot find a bear to be the bearer of your ring, Boo would like you to know that he is available. I heard a curious sound in the night. What would you know about that, Shadowheart? Lady Shah permits me to plead ignorance. I ask not of Lady Shah, but of you and your paramour. I haven't the faintest idea what you mean. Perhaps a cat pounced on its prey. Are you a better man now that you are loved, Astarian? Did they mend your ways? I rather think they did. Can't imagine anyone wanting to do that for you, though, dear. <laughs> Would you ever consider sharing the gift of immortality with me, Astarian? <laughs> I think not. That is for me and my darling to share. If they have prevented your eyes and fangs from wandering to other necks, it must be a special bond indeed. Astarian, I was wrong about you. Truly wrong about you. Oh, let me guess. You thought I'd suck blood, but actually I just suck. <laughs> was that your witty jab? No, I mean it. There's little between us we share, but you've fallen in love and stood by your lover. That is something this dreamer's heart can appreciate. You allowed that smith to meddle with your heart, Karlak, simply so you can be touched? Better to shut off the carnal desires than indulge them. They are distractions. Yes, because every function comes with a handy switch. Next time I'm injured, don't heal. Just turn me off and on again. Something has changed about our friend, hasn't it? But I can't quite put my finger on it. This 
hungry look in their eyes, the haunted complexion. What could it mean? He's a vampire. A few pointers, Lizelle. I heard you and your lover locked in combat, but the test you set was not rigorous enough. Next time, tie them to the ground and do not release them until you are both satisfied. Hmm, you have given me ideas. When you've loved a goddess, as I have, people often think you less experienced in the ways of romance. She just lives on another plane. It's true. For a time, I neglected the physical in favor of celestial euphoria. But our relationship was no less real for it. <laughs> Only jesting. I'm sure you're a force to be reckoned with. The two of you are the unholiest union I can bloody imagine. You had the most precious thing. Someone who would do everything for you. And you damn well took everything. Degenerate doesn't half cut it. <laughs> it's funny. I don't recall asking your opinion, Will. You fight harder than ever now that you have a lover to protect from harm, Lazel. The Gith Yankee should encourage relations between their soldiers. <laughs> it is a proven tactic for morale. We need no boon for morale. I fight well when there is kin at my side. And now, I count one more among them. Halcyon. Tell me about the man behind the hulking wall of muscle. Do you actually do anything besides meditate, counsel, fight, train, and make love? Is such an existence lacking? Hmm. Good question. You confound me, Will. You have all the illustrious iniquities of a warlock, and you choose to impress your partner with dancing. Well, I'm hardly going to say, oh, come here, have a hug in the arms of Hadar. I really didn't expect the affair to last between the two of you, Lazel. Is it getting to be something more? We have spilled one another's blood. We have spent blows until utter exhaustion. Congratulations, I think. Your devilish patron is a delight, Will. Have you ever lain with her? I'm really not that kind of man. She will see her failure to seduce you as a stain on her honor. I know I would. I hear you are spotted being normal in the singing lute, Carlac. Are you feeling all right? Seem like the right thing to do. I've never really tried normal before. <laughs> I never thought I'd see the day our champion of the hells has gone soft. Maybe I have. Finally. And how did you find the quiet life? Mm. It was nice. It was really nice. Carlac, I know I say this every day, but I'm so glad you're here. Me too. You're worth more respect than every last rogue in this city. I hope you know that. Exactly so, Your Majesty. Amorous passions usually make people more considerate, Minthara. Kinder, sympathetic, better at cooperating. They can also make people more protective, guarded, paranoid, and jealous. Uh, never mind. The fact one of your first dates is going to be one of your last. It's just not fair, Karlak. I don't want to think about that. I just want to enjoy whatever comes my way. Even if you and our friend ended up having werewolf cubs, they'd be so adorable. <clears throat> I've shown no signs of lycanthropy, thank you very much. But should that change, I'll take it you're volunteering to be childminder. <laughs> Buy me some protective gloves and I'm all for it. 